What's up Chaos Shinobi here? This is what if Naruto Masters Forgotten Uzumaki Dojutsu? Summary, after unlocking a forgotten dojutsu long thought lost by the Uzumaki that would put the Sharingan and Byakugan to shame. Watch and see Naruto become the ultimate shinobi. Chapter 1, Uzumaki Naruto was a 7 year old boy. But to most, he was the demon child. Naruto never understood why the villagers couldn't treat him with kindness. They always gave him hateful glares or even stoop as low to try and harm him. It was October 10th, seven years after the QB no Yoko's defeat. More importantly, it was our young blonde hero's birthday. His seventh birthday. And that is where we are. Ichiraku's here I come, Naruto exclaimed. Naruto stood at four feet two inches. He wore a baggy orange jumpsuit that covered his body frame. He had six noticeable whisker marks three on each cheek. He had blonde hair and the bluest cerulean eyes you'll ever see. Naruto was on his way to his favorite place to eat, Ichiraku's ramen. The only place in Kanahagakura is no sato that doesn't kick him out. It was his birthday, and he wasn't going to stay cooped up in his apartment all day. Naruto was going to celebrate it with the people he considers his special people. Tuchi and Ayame Ichiraku, the father and daughter duo who own Ichiraku. When he was on his way there. Two Chunin Shinobi with Konoha Hitaitsan approached Naruto. Hey Naruto, one of the Chunin said. Um, sorry but, do I know? Asked Naruto with a confused look on his face. Oh, how rude of me. My name is Fuzan, and my friend here is Hotari. The now named Fuzan said. Fuzan was average in height, standing at 5 feet 8 inches and had a slightly muscular frame. He had long black hair and pitch black eyes with his forehead protector tied to his left bicep. He wore the standard green Chunin flak jacket with a black dark long-sleeved shirt underneath. He wore black hanbu pants that were slightly baggy and black shinobi sandals. Fusen was in his early to mid-twenties. Nice to meet you, said Naruto with his foxy grin. Good. Now that we introduced ourselves the reason we came over is because we had a surprise for you, said Fusen. We heard it was your birthday today, so we decided to help teach you a new powerful ninjutsu for your birthday, said Fusen with an innocent smile, which piqued the blonde's interest. Really? You both wanted to do that for me? What type of jutsu would you teach me? Naruto asked Kasigli. Come with us to one of the training grounds, and we will teach it to you there. You won't be disappointed. We can assure you of that, said Hotari, making himself known. Hotari was in his late teens or early twenties. He was slightly taller than Fuzan standing at 5 feet 10 inches. He had short brown hair with hazel eyes, and his forehead protector was tied in a bandana style. He wore the same thing as Fuzan. The only difference was he wore a blue long-sleeved shirt. Okay. Let's go, said Naruto, thinking nothing of it. He was just excited to be learning a powerful ninjutsu and couldn't wait to see what it was. Fuzan and Hotari started walking with Naruto and Doh. But what Naruto didn't know were the ill intentions the two Chunin had in store for our young hero. They were planning on killing our favorite blonde, thinking they would be seen as heroes for finishing with the Ondame Hokage, 4th Hokage started but what they didn't know was that an anbu with silver hair and a kitsune mask on saw the interaction between the three 15 minutes later fuzan and hotari lead naruto to training ground 44 also named the forest of death naruto narrowed his eyes a little and saw that they were leading him to one of the various gates beyond the gates were massive trees that looked almost prehistoric where are we going asked naruto eyes still narrowed we have to go a little further into the forest the type of ninjutsu that we planned on teaching you is a little destructive, and we don't want anybody getting caught in the crossfire, said Hotari in an irritated voice that Naruto didn't pick up on. Naruto shrugged and kept following them. Thirty minutes later, Fuzan and Hotari were leading Naruto until they came to an abrupt stop in the middle of the wooden area. Hey, why did we stop? Is this where you all are gonna teach me? A confused Naruto asked. Yes, we are here, Fuzan said with a smirk on his face. Okay, so what type of ninjutsu are you gonna teach me? Is it some big fireball that I can breathe out of my mouth? Or a big water dragon that can crush boulders? Asked an impatient Naruto barely being able to contain his excitement. Ha ha ha, why would we do that? Asked Otari mockingly. Because you said you were gonna teach me a powerful ninjutsu for my birthday, asked Naruto as he had a sinking feeling in his gut. Oh right, that, before Hotari finished, he charged at Naruto and punched him in the gut, knocking the wind out of him. Naruto flew back from the force of the blow and he impacted with a tree breaking a couple of ribs in the process with said tree. Ninjutsu. Finished Hotari with a menacing grin plastered on his face. Naruto got up shakingly and glared at the two smirking chunins. What, the hell, was, that for? Asked Naruto as he wiped a bit of blood from his mouth. What was what for? Asked Hotari mockingly. Quit playing games with me. 
Why did you bring me out here? Demanded Naruto. Why did we bring you out here? To kill you, of course. Ha ha ha, roared Fuzan with a menacing laugh. Wh what? Asked Naruto as he took a step back. Why? Ha 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 ha. He doesn't know why. I'll tell you why, demon, said Hotari with hate-filled eyes. Because you killed our parents, our family, and almost destroyed Konoha, you demon. That's why. Finished Fuzan and saw a confused Naruto. Ha ha, he doesn't know why everybody hates him. You would think he would figure it out by now. Pathetic, said Fuzan in a mocking tone. Find out about what? A confused Naruto asked as he looked around but didn't see any escape route that he could take without getting caught by the two. Well, since you're about to die, it's only common courtesy to tell you, Hotari started. Do you remember how our beloved Yondaime, fourth, defeated and killed the Kyubi no Yoko seven years ago? Naruto nodded, not knowing how this had anything to do with why they wanted to kill him. Well, that was a lie. He couldn't kill the Kyubi, so he had to do the next best thing. He sealed it away inside a newborn baby. He sealed the Kyubi no Yoko inside you, demon. You're the Kyubi reborn. After hearing this, Naruto just stood there in a shocked state. You're lying. That's not true. Ha 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 ha. Why do you think people treat you the way that they do, demon? Ha ha ha, said Fuzan as he cackled maniacally. He's right, thought Naruto as he looked down. The way they look at me, treat me and even try to hurt me. But I'm not the Kyubi. I'm, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Enough procrastinating. Time to die, demon, said Hotari. Naruto tried to get away from the two Chunins but to no avail. As Naruto turned to run, he was intercepted by Fuzan. Fuzan kneed Naruto in the face and broke his nose in the process and was skyrocketed back in the opposite direction. Naruto skidded to a stop he tried to get up. Keyword tried. The two Chunin jumped into action making their way to the down Naruto. Entrance of training ground 44. The Anbu who saw the interaction made his way up to the gate that Naruto and the two Chunin went through not that long ago. He wore a gray sleeveless jumpsuit with Anbu armor with a red Anbu tattoo on his right shoulder. There were white wraps on his upper arms. A blue scarf black strappy boots. I'm pretty sure I saw them come this way. Why, would they lead him here? Unless. Nardo. The kitsune mask Anbu thought before dashing into the trees at a fast pace to try and locate our blonde hero before anything bad happened to him. Back with Naruto. Naruto was leaning against a tree panting heavily. I can't move, Naruto thought. I think I broke a couple of ribs from impacting into the tree earlier. I can hardly breathe. Fuzan and Hotari looked at each other and nodded to one another. They dashed to Naruto and started to beat him with no remorse. While Naruto was getting beaten, he started to feel a power rising inside of himself, but once he felt it, it was gone. Then, there was a burning sensation in his eyes. Naruto started to scream in agony from the pain in his eyes, and getting beaten by the two Chunins wasn't helping either. The Chunins stopped their assault on Naruto to see what was happening. A few seconds after Naruto's screaming started, it subsided with Naruto panting hard until he was breathing calmly. Fuzan and Hotari shrugged and were about to continue their assault on our favorite blonde when a pulse of chakra came from Naruto. Powerful enough to make the Chunins be blown back by the force of his chakra. What the hell was that? exclaimed Hotari as he tried to get his bearings back. I don't know. Maybe it's another one of the demon's tricks? said Fuzan as he stood up. They both turned their attention towards Naruto. Naruto was standing there with his bangs shadowing over his eyes. They stood there in shock as they saw Naruto's cuts and bruises started sizzling away as if they were never there. Naruto reached up to his nose and with a loud sickening pop. He resetted his nose. Fuzan and Hotari were horrified of what they had just saw. Naruto raised his head slowly and showed his eyes. Gone were the cerulean blue eyes replaced by red eyes with black swirls that looked like whirlpools, and for his pupils were three connected tomos. Fuzan and Hotari could feel the power radiating from Naruto's eyes. What the hell are you? Fuzan foolishly asked. Naruto turned his attention towards Fuzan, and Naruto's eyes narrowed. Oh, but don't you already know who I am? Asked Naruto mockingly. You say that I am a demon. But I am not. You called me the Kyubi. But I am not. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Remember it? Exclaimed Naruto as he disappeared in a show of speed. Where did he? Fuzan didn't get to finish as he was sent flying back by a kick to his face. Naruto disappeared and reappeared behind Hotari elbowing him in the back of his head, sending him to the bliss of unconsciousness. Die demon, Fuzan yelled with a kunai in hand. Fuzan launched the kunai towards Naruto. Naruto smirked and caught the kunai and threw it back at Fuzan that embedded into his right shoulder. Fuzan fell to the ground in pain. 
Naruto started to walk towards him with a blank expression on his face as he made his way towards the down Fuzen. SD stay back, demon. Get away from me, said Fuzen as he started crawling away of the approaching Kyuubi Jinchuriki. Stand up and fight coward. Naruto ordered. Fuzen shakily got up and took the bloody kunai out of his shoulder. Naruto smirked as he disappeared again and kneed Fuzen in the face, successfully breaking his nose. Fuzen cried in agony as blood started to flow freely down his nose. Not so funny when it's your nose, now is it? Asked Naruto mockingly. Fuzen gritted his teeth as he tried to swipe at Naruto with his bloody kunai. Keyword tried. Naruto dodged and punched him in the gut, effectively knocking the air out of his lungs. As Fuzen was gasping for air, Naruto had enough and knocked him out with a chop behind the back of his neck. Up in the trees, the Anbu arrived just in time to see the tail end of what happened. He saw Naruto, and there was a distinct difference in his eyes. He saw the swirl and the three intersecting Tomoe's in his eyes. Is that a new Dujutsu? I've never seen one like that. The Kitsune masked Anbu thought to himself. But that didn't matter at this point he was just happy that Naruto was gonna be okay. He was kicking himself for allowing this to happen on his watch. He promised to himself that something like this would never happen again and he would make sure of it. He was brought out of his thoughts when a woman appeared next to him. She was an average-sized, young woman who had a slender frame. She had light brown, pupilless eyes. She had black with a blue tint hair styled in a short, spiky, fanned-out ponytail. She was wearing a custom-made outfit that was crafted of thin metal mesh to fit the curves of her body, which covered her from neck to thigh. Over this, she wore a tan overcoat with a purple inseam and a pocket on each side, a dark orange mini skirt, a dark blue belt, and pale gray shin guards. And a snake-fanged necklace. What's up, Kakashi? Said the woman to the now-named silver-headed Anbu. Anko? What are you doing here? Did you see what happened? Kakashi asked with concern in his voice. Something that Anko picked up on. I heard some commotion over here, so I came over. And when I got here, he blew back those scum and started beating the hell out of them. She replied in a disgusted tone. Granted, she was a little twisted, but to do that to a child is despicable. But it seems the Gaki didn't need our help after all, said Anko as she looked where Kakashi was and saw that he was gone. Back with Naruto. After the fight, Naruto started walking towards a nearby tree to lean against, but he didn't make it. Naruto eyes switched back to his cerulean blue eyes, and Naruto lost consciousness only for Kakashi to catch him on his back. Lifting Naruto up piggyback style, Yo Anko, Kakashi called out. The snake mistress jumped down from where she was to Kakashi's side. Hey I was talking to you, Yubaka. But yeah, what's up? Take those two traitors to Hokage-sama and tell him what had happened. Tell him if he needs me, I'll be with Naruto at my apartment, said Kakashi and received a nod in return. Rest now. Naruto, you and me both know you need it, Kakashi thought as he took to the trees with Naruto sleeping soundly on his back. Secrets revealed, Kakashi was dashing tree to tree and couldn't help but frown. Granted, he did watch Naruto single-handedly defeat Tuchunin by himself at the age of seven and possibly activated a new Dujutsu. But he couldn't believe that Shinobi of Konoha would stoop as low to try and kill a seven-year-old child. Jay would make sure something like that never happened again as he continued his way to his apartment. Ten minutes later, Kakashi had just reached his apartment with Naruto sleeping peacefully on his back. His apartment was a single-bedroom apartment with one bathroom and kitchen. The living room was slightly smaller than the bedroom but nice. Kakashi walked into the living room and laid Naruto on his couch and waited for Naruto to gain consciousness. Kakashi sighed he knew he was going to get an earful from the sun Daime Hokage soon. Just as he thought that there was a knock at his door, he sighed again, knowing who it was. Kakashi answered the door and showed the aged Hokage, Sarutobi Haruzen. Sarutobi Haruzen was a below average stature with gray spiky hair and a gray goatee. Haruzen was in his early 60s, but don't let his age fool you. Hiruzen wasn't named God of Shinobi for nothing. Hiruzen wore the standard attire of red and white Hokage robes consisting of the Hokage's hat with the kanji for third on it and a red and white haori. Hello Kakashi-san, the aged Hokage greeted. Yo! So what brings you to my humble abode Hokage-sama? Asked Kakashi with his traditional eye smile. Quit playing games Kakashi-san, where is Naruto-kun? Asked and irritated Hiruzen. Oh, he is sleeping right now on the couch. Would you like to come in? Asked Kakashi receiving a nod in return from the aged Hokage. Hiruzen smiled to see Naruto sleeping peacefully on the couch without a care in the world. He was happy that he could sleep so peacefully with the past day of events. Hiruzen took a seat in a chair next to the couch Naruto was sleeping on. So out of all places, why did you bring him here? I told you not to make contact with him until you became his Jounin-sensei when he graduated from the academy. 
if my calculations are correct, it's early, six years early, Kakashi, exclaimed and irritated Hiruzen as he gave the Jounin a stern look. Well, he's been treated like a demon for his first seven years of life, and the villagers tried numerous times to hurt the boy. Just like the past day of events where two Chunin tried to kill him. I'm going to take Naruto under my wing so this will never happen again. Hokage-sama, it would be more than this village has ever done for him, and sure enough, more than you have ever done for him, Kakashi fired back. What is that supposed to mean, Kakashi? Roared Iruzin as he stood up after that comment. What I mean is. Naruto has been fending for himself since he was born. He was kicked out of the orphanage by the age of five to live on the streets for months. He has been kicked out of stores because people think he is a demon. And what have you done to prevent these things? Nothing. The Ondame and Kushina would have been ashamed of this village. If they were still alive, they would have finished what the Kyuubi started and destroyed the village for harming and mistreating their son. You could have prevented this, but you're too soft now and can't stick up for yourself against the damn villagers and council, yelled Kakashi, losing his cool for the first time in a long time. Hiruzen, for the first time in his life, he was speechless. He didn't know what to say. What Kakashi said was true. He knew it. Kakashi knew it, how the whole village knew it. Maybe what Kakashi said had some merit. He looked down at the floor in defeat and sighed. Hokage-sama, I'm sorry I didn't. Hiruzen raised his hand to stop him. It's alright, Kakashi. You're right. I guess I'm just getting too old for this. I could have done a better job of protecting Naruto. And out of the first act, I will allow you to help train Naruto. But he's going to need to know why you're going to train him. The real reason why. Stated Iruzin with his traditional grandfathery smile. Kakashi grinned ear to ear, but not that you could tell with his face mask covering half his face. Understood Hokage-sama. Kakashi replied, curiosity getting the best of him, Hiruzin asked, So what is this dujutsu that Anko told me about Naruto possibly unlocking? I've never seen it before until today. I think it's related to the Uzumaki from how it looks. Replied Kakashi. What do you mean, Kakashi? Asked and interested Hiruzin. Well, from how it looks. Just like this insignia on the back of my John and vest. But the only difference is the three connected domos he has in the middle, like a pupil. At least from what I remember, I only got a glance at it when I saw it. Explained, Kakashi. Really? So from what Anko told me, Naruto defeated the two Chunin single-handedly. Was that just a side effect from activating this so-called dujutsu? Hiruzen asked. Maybe, because from what I know, Naruto was never that fast or skilled before. His visual prowess increased significantly, his speed and strength. Hiruzen debated for a minute or two and stood up to leave. I'll be back in an hour. I have some things to look into. With that, Hiruzen left with a sealess sunshine. Kakashi sat down in the chair. Hiruzen was in and closed his eyes and fell into the bliss of unconsciousness exhausted from the past day of events. About an hour and a half later, Kakashi was sleeping until he heard a knock at the door. Kakashi stretched his muscles and stood up. Kakashi answered and it was the aged Hokage again. So, did you find what you were looking for? Asked Kakashi as he let the aged Hokage in. No, not a thing. There were no records of Naruto's Dujutsu in our records. So maybe there might be some information in Rizushio Gaku no Sato on Naruto's Dujutsu seeming if it came from the Uzumaki, exclaimed Hiruzen with a thoughtful look. Kakashi cocked his eyebrow on hearing that. But isn't Rizushio Gaku in ruins? Asked Kakashi. Well, yes. But that doesn't mean all of their records went down with Ozoshio Gaku no Sato all those years ago. Later, I'll send you and Naruto out to find out what you can of this mysterious dujutsu, said Hiruzen. And when will that be, Hokage-sama? Asked an interested Kakashi. It all depends when you think he is ready, replied Hiruzen with a smile. Yawn ready for what Jigi? Naruto asked sleepily as he leaned up off the couch in a sitting position. Oh, look, who is finally awake? Are you feeling alright, Naruto? Asked the aged Hokage as he gave Naruto a grandfatherly smile. Never better, but I'm really sore for some reason, and where am I? Naruto said as he stretched his muscles out some. Kakashi was the one to answer that well, after you defeated those two Chunin, I took it upon myself to bring you back to my place so you can rest. What are you talking about? Asked a confused Naruto until it suddenly had hit him. The past day of events was when the two Chunin purposely tricked and led him into a dark and scary forest to kill him. Them explaining why the village hates him and don't want anything to do with him and being the container of the Kyuubi no Yoko was the cause of it. Is it true? What they said? Am I the Kyuubi? Saying the last part above a whisper but both Hiruzen and Kakashi heard him. It is true that you are the container of the Kyuubi but not the Kyuubi itself, Naruto. You can't let what they said affect you, Naruto, 
because it is not true. They are weak-minded fools if they can't tell a boy from the QB. And Naruto, you don't have to worry about them anymore either. Finished Kakashi as he put a hand on his shoulder. How do you know me, and how do you know that? Asked Naruto with a confused look. Well, you know me as Kitsune when I was a Nanbu, but my friends call me Kakashi. Kakashi said with his traditional eye smile. Naruto examined Kakashi for a minute spiky gray silverish hair. Check. Lazy demeanor. Check. Kitsune mask on the table. Check. Yep, that's Kitsune, alright. Okay, but how do you know that they won't try anything else or even the villagers? Asked Naruto with a scared look in his eyes. Well, because I am going to take you under my wing and train you in the shinobi ways, isn't that right, Hokage-sama? Asked Kakashi with his eye smile never leaving his face. The aged Hokage sighed and felt another headache threatening to split his head for the hundredth time that day. Yes, that is true. So what do you say, Naruto? That would be awesome. But why? Why would you want to train me? Asked Naruto questionably. Kakashi looked over to the aged Hokage and received a nod answering his question before he could ask. Well, I promised you. Kakashi hesitated before Naruto asked. Who did you promise? Naruto's curiosity was getting the best of him. Your parents. I promised your parents I would help protect you. Finished Kakashi. My parents. He knew my parents thought a shocked Naruto. Naruto just sat there debating if he heard him correctly. My parents. Who were they? Kakashi just stood there and looked over at Hiruzen again. Hiruzen nodded for him to continue. Kakashi took a deep breath and said, Your mother was Uzumaki Kushina. She was one of the most fearsome Kunoichi also known as the red-hot-blooded Abanero. Her and your father loved you so much. Naruto genuinely smiled, not the fake one he had plastered on his face. He showed the village but a true genuine smile. And what of my father? He asked. Your father was. Namikaze Minato, but you know him as the. Yondame 4th Hokage. With that said, Kakashi dug in his pocket and revealed a picture of a blonde male and a red-headed woman who was pregnant looking she was ready to pop any minute. It was the Yondame Hokage with the biggest smile and his hand was on the beautiful red-headed woman's stomach who also had the biggest smile plastered on her face. Naruto grabbed the picture out of his hand and looked at it. There were so many emotions running through him that he didn't know what to feel. He was happy that he finally knew who his parents were but was angry for what his hero, his role model, and his own father sealed away inside him and made his life what it was today. Tears started to threaten to fall from Naruto's eyes as he asked, Why? Why would he choose me? Why would he use his own son to seal away the QB? It has made my life miserable. Minato loved you, Naruto, and so did your mother. They loved you with all of their heart, and I know it hurt Minato's heart to seal the QB away inside of you. It was his only choice at the time, and it was the only way to protect the village. Minato wanted you to be seen as a hero of the village, but the villagers were so consumed by fear they saw you as the total opposite. If Minato or Kushina were still alive, they would have made this village pay for what they have done to you, Naruto. Hiruzen said with a soft smile as he looked at Naruto with concern in his eyes. Naruto just sat there and let the tears roll down his face, letting all his emotions out he let stay cooped up inside himself for so long. After a few minutes, Naruto wiped the tears from his eyes as he sat there with a blank face. Naruto, maybe this will help answer some of your questions, said Hiruzen as he pulled out a letter from his pocket and handed it to Naruto. Naruto just sat there with the unopened letter in his hands. I need some time to myself right now said Naruto as he stood up to leave. Naruto, if you want to be trained by me, meet me at training ground 9 at noon in two days, said Kakashi. But Naruto didn't give an answer as he left Kakashi apartment leaving Kakashi and the aged Hokage. That could have gone better, said Kakashi. Well, it wasn't going to be easy. At least he knows now, said Hiruzen as he pulled out his trusty pipe and packed it with tobacco and lighting it with a low-level katanjutsu. Do you think Naruto will be alright? Asked a slightly concern. Kakashi. Yes. He just needs some time to himself for right now. But in time, he should come around, said Hiruzen taking the puff out of his pipe. I have a question, Hokage-sama? Said Kakashi, gaining the old Hokage's attention. And what would that be, Kakashi? How would you react if you were in Naruto's poison? Asked Kakashi. I don't know, Kakashi. I can honestly say I don't know. It's just like you said, Naruto lived a tough life, and this just added fuel to the fire. Naruto may not look it but he is a very mature child for his age. This is just another obstacle he has to overcome emotionally. But in time, he will overcome it. The aged Hokage answered. So where do you think he went? Asked Kakashi. The aged man sighed, 
where he usually goes to when he tries to clear his mind, and that would be, the Hokage Mountain. With Naruto, Naruto was sitting on the Yandime's head with the letter still unopened in his hand. Naruto sighed. He should be happy to finally know who his parents were, but he wasn't. He understood why his father did what he did but felt sad that he didn't have his mother or father to love him. That's all he ever wanted, a family. Naruto looked at the letter that was still in his hand and decided to open it. The letter said, Dear Naruto, if you are reading this, then your mother and I have passed on. I'm truly sorry that we weren't there for you. I'm sorry if you had a rough life without us. We loved you with all our of our heart and couldn't wait for you to be born. I wish we were there for you for you to love you, train you, and watch you grow into a man. But some things don't play out that way. I just hope you can find a way to forgive me for what I'm about to do. Naruto, I don't have much time, so I'll get straight to the point. Go to the fourth's head, and there is a seal. Pour some of your chakra into it, and you will be transferred inside. There you have everything you need. All of my notes, all of my jutsu at your disposal. Use them well. There was a man who wanted to bring peace to this world, and maybe you would meet him one day. He asked me to bring peace to this world, but I failed. That's why I want to entrust you to bring peace to this hate-filled world, an unbreakable peace. Not by making people fear you but to show them love and compassion sometimes even to your enemies. You can do it, I know you can because you're my son. I love you, Naruto. Make us proud. Your father, Namikaze Minato. Naruto teared up after reading the letter. He folded it up and put it in his pocket. Naruto stood from where he was sitting and took a deep breath of the cool night air. Thank you for believing in me, Tosan. I will make you and Kachan proud. Two days passed, and Naruto was on his way towards training ground 9 to meet Kakashi. He was walking through the village and received the normal glares he would usually receive. It angered him slightly more than it usually did after learning who his parents were. They worshipped his father as if he were Kami himself, but in time, he would prove to them that he wasn't the QB, but Uzumaki Naruto. One day, he would be seen as the greatest Hokage even greater than his father. Fifteen minutes later, Naruto just reached training ground 9 and saw he was the only one there. He walked over to a nearby tree and leaned against it. It was fifteen minutes till noon, so he had some time to spare. He was excited to begin his training, so he left earlier than he needed to. Naruto was there for another fifteen minutes before Kakashi had arrived. Naruto could see Kakashi walking with an orange book in hand that he was engrossed in, with a backpack swinged over his shoulder occupied by his other hand. Naruto's sweat dropped after he heard Kakashi giggled like a schoolgirl. Great, I have a pervert as a sensei, just my luck, Naruto thought as he stood up from the tree he was leaning against. Kakashi saw Naruto and put his book away in his kunai pouch. Yo, greeted Kakashi. Kakashi was happy that Naruto took his offer in training him and excited to be training his sensei's son. I have a question that's been bothering me since you told me who my parents were a couple of days ago, Naruto said. And what would that be? Do I have any other family that's still alive? Asked Naruto, hope filled in his cerulean blue eyes, by blood no. At least none that I'm aware of at the moment, once Naruto heard that all hope left his eyes. But, Kakashi continued. You do have a godfather that is still alive. Naruto looked up at Kakashi and asked, who and where is he? Kakashi sighed and replied, his name is Jiraiya. One of the legendary Sanin and your father's sensei. And where? He is the village's spy master and gathers important intel for our village. He wanted to take you with him knowing what the village would do to you, but he couldn't because it would be too dangerous for the both of you. So he asked me to look after you and I did from the shadows and made sure no harm would come to you. Naruto nodded and contemplated for a minute or two before sighing and asked, Do you know when he will be back? Kakashi shook his head negatively and said, He never said, but you will meet him one day. That I promise. Now, before we start. I have a question. What do you remember from your fight with those Chunins? Naruto thought back to the incident and replied, I remember the Chunins leading me to that forest and telling me why they brought me there. Then they attacked me, and then I woke up in your apartment. That's all I remember. Kakashi nodded well that's not all that happened. Kakashi relayed what else that happened with the two Chunins. Naruto was shocked from what Kakashi told him and asked, I did all those things? And received a nod from Kakashi. Whoa? was Naruto's response. We also think you activated a new dujutsu too, Naruto. What? Like what the Hyuga and Uchiha clan have? Asked a baffled Naruto. Kakashi nodded and asked, Do you know how to access into your chakra? And received a nod from Naruto. Okay, I want you to channel some chakra into your eyes, alright. The one-eyed Jounin said with an intrigued eye. Naruto did as he was told and started to channel his chakra towards his eyes. A few seconds went by and Naruto's cerulean blue eyes changed into red eyes with black swirls that looked like whirlpools, 
and for his pupils were three connected tomoes. Kakashi pulled out a kunai so he could see his reflection. Wow. This is amazing. My eyes look awesome. I can also see your chakra Kakashi-sensei. This is awesome. I'm one step closer to becoming Hokage, exclaimed Naruto as he hopped around Kakashi, and he could only smile or I smile at Naruto's antics. Okay, Naruto, calm down. During your training, I will teach you how to control your chakra, and I will try to help you use your dujutsu as best as I can. Then later, I'll teach you some jutsu once your chakra control is adequate enough, alright. Any questions before we begin? Yay, what do you mean you'll try and help me with my dujutsu? Asked a confused Naruto. Well, Hokage-sama and I have no idea what it does. There were no records for your dujutsu. Later, though, you and I will go on a misan and try and figure out what your mysterious dujutsu does. But in the meantime, we will be strengthening your eyes by keeping them activated while we train. The more you use them, the less strain they will cause to your eyes. I hope, said Kakashi but muttered that last part to himself. Okay, the first thing I'll teach you is the tree walking exercise. Which he got a confused look from our orange clad hero. Let me explain, said Kakashi as he walked over to a tree and started to walk up it as if it was an everyday thing. And Kakashi continued this training involves in focusing a fixed amount of chakra to the bottom of your feet, and using that amount to climb the tree and keep channeling that fixed amount to stick to the tree. If you use too little, you'll lose your footing and slip off, but if, Kakashi was cut off when Naruto dashed to a tree and tried to run up it. Keyword tried. Naruto only put one foot on the tree and was blasted off and sent in the opposite direction of said tree and landed in a nearby pond. Kakashi sweat dropped as he watched the scene play out. Just like his mother, thought Kakashi. Kakashi saw Naruto get out of the pond drenched head to toe. And that's what happens when you channel too much chakra to your feet, he said as he I smiled and received a tick mark in return from our favorite orange clad hero. Why didn't you say that in the first place before I did that? exclaimed and irritated Naruto. Kakashi sighed and replied well if you didn't rush into things and would have let me finish, you would have known. Naruto sheepishly scratched the back of his head and said a simple sorry and stood up. Now Naruto, focus your eyes to the soles of my feet and see how much chakra I am channeling to stick to the tree, said Kakashi as he pulled out his his orange book again and started to read it. Naruto nodded and focused on his feet and saw he was channeling not too much or too little, just enough to stick to the tree. Before Naruto started to run to the tree, a kunai landed about a foot away from his right foot. Use that to mark the tree, and we will see how you progressed at the end of the day. I want you to be at least halfway up the tree by sunset. Begin, Kakashi said as he jumped over to a nearby tree and sat on a tree branch pulling out his favorite orange book. Naruto picked up, said kunai, and darted towards the tree. He got up about five feet before he started to slip and mark the tree. This is going to be a lot harder than I thought, said Naruto. Naruto continued this for the rest of the day. On each attempt he made, it was better than the last, even if it was only an inch. The sun started to set, and Naruto made it past the halfway point. Kakashi was pleased with this and decided to call it a day and told Naruto to be back at the same time tomorrow. Kakashi left in a swirl of leaves, leaving a worn out Naruto to his thoughts. I'm getting closer and closer to becoming Hokage. Naruto thought happily and made his way back to the village. There was something else he had to check before he went home. 30 minutes later on top of the Hokage mountain, Naruto was standing on the fourth's head and was looking for a specific seal. Naruto couldn't find the seal after 10 minutes of searching he had the same problem last night after reading his Tosan's letter. He subconsciously channeled chakra towards his eyes, and Naruto saw the kanji for seal that was glowing blue at the center of the fourth's head. He walked up to the seal and channeled chakra into the seal. Naruto vanished from the fourth's head as if he was never there. With Naruto, where am I? Asked Naruto to no one in particular. He looked up and was amazed by what he saw. This is amazing, said a shocked Naruto and couldn't help but grin ear to ear. In the room Naruto was in, there were shelves upon shelves filled with scrolls and books. Ranging from basics on chakra control, fuinjutsu, history of all the hidden villages, daijutsu, genjutsu, ninjutsu, fuinjutsu, kenjutsu and the list goes on and on. To think Tosan would hide this under everybody's noses hey hey ha 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 ha, said Naruto as he started to cackle maniacally. Naruto started looking around the room and just couldn't believe what he was seeing. Everything was in chronological order. That would make things much easier for himself. After looking around, something caught Naruto's attention at the back of the room. He made his way there, and it was slip of paper attached to the wall with the kanji for blood seal written on it. Blood seal huh? Well here goes nothing. Naruto cut his finger with the kunai Kakashi gave him and swiped his blood and added some chakra on the seal it glowed for a couple of seconds and it opened. 
Inside there were a lot of papers, probably his father's notes, but what caught his attention was a sword and some rather strange tripronged kunai with some kanji written on it. It was a katana approximately 27 inches long, and the hilt of the blade was another 10 inches in length. The sheath was blood red with black and red swirls near the hilt on each side, Uzumaki insignia. The hilt was also blood red with two dragons, one black and one white intersecting with each other on both sides. The blade was a magnificent work of art. Naruto removed the sword from the sheath and showed the sword in all of its glory. The steel of the sword was pitch black with a red sword on each side of the blade. Naruto couldn't help but gasp from the sight of the sword whoever had crafted the sword put a lot of time and effort into this work of art. Naruto was shocked at how light the blade was. It felt as if it was a couple of pounds at most. Naruto was flabbergasted. This had to be one of the best crafted swords in all of Fire Country. Naruto put the katana back in its sheath and placed it back. He resealed the contents and decided it was time to go. I think I should take a couple of books or scrolls with me, Naruto said as he grinned ear to ear. The next day mid-afternoon, Naruto was on his back, trying to catch his breath from doing the tree walking exercise still. Naruto was about three-fourths of the way up the tree. I will get this down by the end of the day, exclaimed Naruto and dashed towards the tree that had at least over a hundred cuts engraved in said tree. Naruto passed his old mark and continued up about another five or so feet before he started to lose his footing and swiped at the tree. Naruto managed to smirk and said, Huff. Huff. Progress. Huff. Huff. Kakashi I smiled from the tree he was leaning against, just like his father, he thought. He could see the same determination in his eyes, just like he used to see in his father's when he was still alive. He's like both Yumi Nato Sensei, Kushina Senpai. The will of fire burns the strongest in him. You'd both be proud. Hey Kakashi Sensei, said Naruto, gaining the one-eyed Jounin's attention. Yeah, Naruto, said Kakashi as he looked up from his book. What were my parents like? Asked Naruto. Kakashi put his book away and gathered his thoughts and replied, Your mother, from what I remember. She was a loving and caring individual. She would go out of her way and help those in need and risk her life in doing so. She was well-known Konochi for her Kenjutsu and Fuinjutsu. She also earned the name the Red Hot, Blooded Abanero. She also had a temper, too, when she wanted to. And from what your father also told me when she came to live here, her first day at the academy, she proclaimed she would be the first female Hokage Hihei. She also loved ramen and pranking, so I see where you get it from. Naruto couldn't help but grin ear to ear after hearing that. Your father was always calm, collected, and highly perceptive. He was also loving and caring, and if anyone tried to harm any of the people he cares for, especially Kushina, he would show no remorse. You resemble your father more than your mother, well excluding your whisker marks. If you grow out your two side bangs more, you could be mistaken for twins. Your father, as you know, was a powerful shinobi and would do anything to protect his home said Kakashi as he saw Naruto look down from the last comment he said. After my father died and I became a Janan, Minato was like a father figure to me. I looked up to your father and wanted to be just like him. I know you must be angry with your father for what he did. But you have to understand that he and Kushina loved you they counted down the days until you were born. Your father smiled every single day, knowing he would become a father. I know it killed Minato inside for what he did. Finished Kakashi. I'm not angry with my father, Kakashi Sensei. I love both of my parents. He did what he had to do and protect the village. If I was in his shoes and it was the only way to protect the village, I would do the same thing," Naruto said as he gave Kakashi a huge grin. Well, that's very mature of you, Naruto. Hey, if you finish the tree walking exercise, I'll get you something to eat anything you want, my treat," said Kakashi he obviously didn't know what he was getting himself into. Deal exclaimed Naruto and dashed towards the tree he was practicing on with renewed vigor. Later that day, Naruto was chowing down on his tenth bowl of ramen and showed no signs of stopping anytime soon. Hey Naruto, do you think you had enough yet? Asked a baffled Kakashi as he watched Naruto scarf down bowl after bowl as if he had never eaten before. Mmm -hmm ah was Naruto's intelligent response. Kakashi couldn't help but sweat drop. What did I get myself into, he thought. I still can't believe you finished that exercise I gave you said Kakashi as he watched Naruto finishing up another bowl of ramen. Well, you, slurp, burp. Know how to inspire somebody, hey? Okay? Naruto said as he was handed another bowl from Michiraku Tuchi. Tuchi was a kind man. He treated Naruto as if he were his grandson. He is often seen smiling and treats Naruto as well and considers him as their best customer. Thanks, old man. And keep them coming, Naruto exclaimed as he dug into his new bowl of ramen. By the time Naruto was done eating, there were 26 empty bowls in front of him. 
Tucci was smiling as if he hit the jackpot in Kakashi. Well, he was crying anime tears with his now empty wallet in hand. Ah, now that hit the spot. I'll see you tomorrow, Kakashi sensei, said Naruto as he made his way back to his apartment. Yeah. See you tomorrow, replied Kakashi putting his wallet back into his pocket. Well, there goes all of my money, sigh. Just like Kushina Senpai said Kakashi as he left in a swirl of leaves. One year later day before Academy begins. It was nightfall, Naruto was sitting on top of the fourth's head, looking over the village on the Hokage mountain. Naruto had progressed a lot over the year with the tutelage of his new sensei, Hitake Kakashi. During the past year of Kakashi's teachings and his father's mini library, Naruto excelled exponentially. Naruto couldn't help but smile at thinking back at how strong he has gotten over the past year. During the first two months, Kakashi trained Naruto specifically in chakra control until he thought Naruto's control was adequate enough. The next month he taught Naruto the three basic academy jutsus consisting of the Henge, Kawarimi, Substitution, and Bunshine, Clone. Naruto learned the Henge and Kawarimi within the first two weeks. The Bushin, not so much. For two weeks Naruto tried and failed every time to make a Bushin. The Bushin would come out the same every time. The Bushin would be pale, very pale and looked as if it had a deathly disease that couldn't even stand upright. That infuriated Naruto beyond belief that he couldn't make a simple Bushin. So Kakashi found another alternative route and taught him the cage Bushin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone. The result. While well, you could say afterwards Kakashi had to pick up his jaw off the ground. Literally. Flashback 9 months. Kakashi was watching Naruto attempt the Bushin for the hundredth time that day and was praying to Kami he would get it right this time. But Kami didn't hear his prayer because Naruto failed, again. Hey Naruto come over here, said Kakashi as Naruto nodded and made his way over to his sensei. Okay, I'm going to teach you a more advanced Bushin. It is called Cage Bushin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique, said Kakashi and received an irritated look from Naruto. Another Bushin. How can I do a more advanced one if I can't even do the simplest Bushin? exclaimed Naruto as he tried to get his anger under control but was failing miserably. Kakashi sighed and replied because the cage Bushin uses more chakra than the regular Bushin. Like I told you before you have large chakra reserves for one so young. You are an Uzumaki, Uzumakis have naturally large chakra reserves. You also contain the Kyubi no Yoko. With the seal your father used to seal the Kyubi within you, your reserves grow daily. You already have low to mid and level reserves at the age of 7. 7 Naruto. So I've concluded that it would be impossible for you to learn the regular Bushin. That's why I'm going to teach you the cage Bushin no Jutsu. Fine, said Naruto. Good. But there is some things you need to know about the cage Bushin. 1. This is a forbidden Jutsu because it can potentially be dangerous. The cage Bushins you make are given an equal amount of chakra directly from you. 2. Do not overexert yourself with this technique, if you do you could possibly die. Do you understand? Stated Kakashi seriously. Hi exclaimed Naruto. Oh, and another thing about the cage Bushin is that whatever memories or experiences it had gained, after being dispelled you will gain its past memories or experiences. So this can help with your training as well later on. Kakashi showed Naruto the cross seal and said go ahead and try it out. Naruto nodded and shouted, cage Bushin no Jutsu. What happened next made Kakashi's jaw hit the ground, and surprisingly enough, his face mask stayed on. What stood in front of Kakashi were at least 100 solid clones of orange-clad, moppy blonde hair, and cerulean blue-eyed Naruto's who each had shit-eating grins plastered on their faces. Well this changes things, thought Kakashi as he picked his jaw off the ground. End of flashback. And changed it did. For the next 9 months Kakashi taught Naruto the basic academy taijutsu, shuriken jutsu, speed and physical endurance training. Naruto excelled beyond Kakashi's expectations during the first year and this was only the beginning. Kakashi thought Naruto was a natural-born prodigy. If only the academy could have saw the potential Naruto had. After Naruto was done training with Kakashi he would sneak inside the fourth's head at night and study up on anything he could get his hands on in his father's library. It would range from basics of chakra control, ninjutsu scrolls, the different styles of taijutsus, history of the different shinobi villages, few and jutsu which was rather easy he thought and the different styles of Kenjutsus. The cage Bushin also helped with this so whatever the Bushin read he would gain its memories after being dispelled. Instead of reading a book at a time he could read 40 or 50 at a time which helped tremendously. Naruto wanted to learn a different Taijutsu style other than the Academy Taijutsu Kakashi had taught him. He was looking through all the different styles one day that he could learn or that garnered his interest. After about an hour of searching he found one. It was called the Whirling Tide Fist which originated from Uzoshio Gakoer. It relied on speed, power, 
and precision. The Whirling Tide Fist was perfect for Naruto in every way. The Whirling Tide Fist attacked the pressure points and weak points of one's body effectively enabling someone or possibly killing someone in one blow if mastered, but not only that, similar to the Gokan in some ways it implemented bone-crushing punches, kicks, headbutts and acrobatic maneuvers so if his enemy could negate his effects of going after pressure points his Taijutsu would be able to switch up if the need arised. So, long story short it was the perfect Taijutsu for any situation. Naruto was a long way from mastering this new Taijutsu style but in time he would. Naruto took an interest in Kenjutsu after finding a few scrolls about Kenjutsu. He started practicing the basics and it felt natural to him. He learned the basics of Kenjutsu in about a month by himself and practices daily to improve his skills. Out of all the different subjects Naruto studied, Fuinjutsu was his favorite. He couldn't understand why but Fuinjutsu felt natural to him just like Kenjutsu. He would study and practice all the different types of sealing he could get his hands on. He also started using gravity seals to increase his speed and power something he needed to use his Daijutsu correctly. Naruto realized that his Dujutsu could read and descript Fuinjutsu rather easily. He could decipher low-level seals without much difficulty, even if he had never saw the seal before. Naruto tried to find information on his Dujutsu in his father's library but came up with nothing. Naruto's curiosity for his mysterious Dujutsu increases day by day of what his abilities are for his Dujutsu. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts when someone said so this is where you have been, Naruto. Naruto looked over to see his sensei, Kakashi reading his favorite orange book called Icha Icha, Paradise. Yeah, I couldn't sleep so I decided to come here replied Naruto. Kakashi nodded and asked are you looking forward to the new year at the academy tomorrow? Naruto shrugged his shoulders and said, not really. I probably might know everything they will be teaching for this year. That's if I don't get kicked out of the class for nothing again. But from what Gigi told me, there will be a new instructor, and he wouldn't do that. So only time will tell. You might be right Naruto, but remember what I told you. Do not show your skills or anything that I taught to you, to anyone or who your parents were until you have graduated. Kakashi stated in a more serious tone. Naruto sighed. I know, I know, deception is the shinobi's greatest weapon. And besides, if I showed I was better than everybody else or smarter, the villagers would be calling for my head. The prankster, loudmouth, and deadlast will be my mask until graduation, so don't worry. Finished Naruto with a sigh he wasn't looking forward to it but he would try and make the best out of it. Kakashi nodded and said, okay, there's one more thing too. Once you start back up at the academy, I will have to go back to my regular down in duties. But I will still train you during my spare time and when I'm not here I will have a training regimen for you to do when I'm gone, alright. Also, don't overdo it with the cage Bushin. Which he received a sheepish nod in return, make sure you get some sleep, and I'll stop by before you leave. Later, with that Kakashi left in a swirl of leaves, man I gotta learn that thought Naruto as he left also. Next day, Naruto was sleeping peacefully until the morning sunbeams shined through Naruto's window and shining on Naruto's face making our favorite blonde stir. Naruto groggily got up and made his way to the bathroom to shower and brush his teeth. After he finished getting dressed, Naruto heard a knock at his door. Naruto answered and saw Kakashi standing there and, of course, reading his Icha Icha. Yo, said Kakashi as he walked in Naruto's apartment. Hey Kakashi Nisan what brings you here this early in the morning? And if I remember correctly you're never up this early. Asked Naruto as he narrowed his eyes a little. Well, I just wanted to wish you luck before you left for the academy and give you your training regimen because I'm leaving for a mission today, said Kakashi as he handed Naruto a scroll. Naruto took the scroll and put it away inside his orange baggy jacket. Thanks, so when will you be back? Asked Naruto. Kakashi shrugged and replied maybe three weeks or a month but when I get back I'll teach you a couple new jutsus. Oh yeah. When do you have to be at the academy? 8. Why? Asked a confused Naruto. It's 8.15 Kakashi lazily said. Naruto was starting to panic his first day of the new year at the academy and he was already late. Kakashi seeing our favorite blonde he said Naruto, when I'm late for something I always give an excuse that anybody could believe. Just tell them. Academy 15 minutes later, you could hear someone running through the halls of the academy until it stopped. Naruto opened the door, and all eyes were on him. Hey sorry I'm late I uh... I got lost on the path of life, said Naruto as he sheepishly scratched the back of his head. This earned a couple of snickers and a lot of sweat drops. But his new instructor Amino Iruka's eyebrow was twitching furiously and had a tick mark. Iruka wore the standard attire for a chunin. He had pineapple-shaped brown hair and a scare horizontally across his nose. Iruka's used his signature big-headed jutsu increasing the size of his head by ten times and yelled Naruto. 
That is the worst excuse I have ever heard. Now take a seat. Naruto nodded and ran towards an open seat towards the back of the class. Naruto looked around and saw that there were a lot of clan heirs in his class. The first was the Nara clan heir, Narashikamaru. The Nara clan was known for its high IQ and highly skilled in strategy and planning. The smarter the Nara the lazier they were. Shikamaru wore a mesh shirt with a black sleeveless jacket and black pants. His hair was black, in a pineapple style hair much like Erika's. Then there was the Akimichi clan heir, Akimichi Choji. Choji was a short heavy set boy. His clan was known for using techniques that can increase their size by 100 times and their clan techniques relied on high calorie usage which means he was always eating. There was the Yamanaka clan heiress, Yamanaka Ino. Ino had long blonde hair and wore a dark purple outfit. Her clan used mind control techniques. They could read thoughts, confuse and make enemies attack one another, and even take control of an enemy's body. There was the Inuzuka clan heir, Inuzuka Kiba. Kiba had brown hair and sharp black eyes with vertical slits pronounced canine teeth, and two red fang-like markings, one on each cheek. Kiba wore dark grayish pants and a gray, hooded fur-lined coat. The Inuzukas were known for their dog partners and collaboration in jutsu. There was the Aburame clan heir, Aburame Shino. He had black glasses and wore a gray coat that only showed his glasses. Their clan relied on their insects to fight. There was the Hyuga clan heiress, Hyuga Hinata. Hinata had heim cut style, with chin-length strands framing her face. She wore a cream colored hooded jacket with fur around the cuffs and hem, with navy blue pants. The Hyugas were known for their dojutsu, Byakugan. The Byakugan when active allows them to see chakra with high detail, almost 360 degree vision and long range extending to multiple kilometers if trained enough. The last clan was the Uchiha clan heir, Uchiha Sasuke. Sasuke was the last of his clan and the sole survivor of the Uchiha clan massacre that happened about a month ago. The Uchihas were known for their dojutsu, the Sharingan. Sasuke had crow-colored black hair and eyes. He wore a blue short sleeve shirt with the Uchiha's clan crest on the back with white shorts. There was also a girl with pink-colored hair with green eyes named Haruno Sakura. Sakura wore a red dress with white circular designs and tight dark green shorts. She wasn't a clan heiress but she was in his class. The rest of the class was filled with regular civilian children who had high hopes in becoming a shinobi of Konoha. Naruto, after he was looking around in the class he had an idea. Instead of coming to the academy, he would just send a cage bush into class so he could get much needed training in. No offense to Iruka, but he could use his time training rather than wasting his time in the academy learning something he probably already knows. Once they took a break for lunch, he would switch out with a cage bush and start on that training regimen that Kakashi gave him. Knowing Kakashi, it would probably leave Naruto barely able to walk after. Sometimes, he wondered if his sensei had a twisted side. I mean, he did have Naruto climb up the side of a mountain only using one hand, but it really couldn't get worse than that, right, right? Naruto was brought out of his musings when Iruka spoke up. Okay class today we will be learning. Iruka began his lecture only for Naruto to fall asleep almost instantly. Zzzzz, snore, zzzzz. Two years later, there was loud breathing that could be heard coming from training ground 9. Naruto was laying on his back panting and sweating profusely. The training ground had numerous of craters and trees cut in half all throughout the training ground he was in. It seems like we can't use this training ground anymore, said Kakashi gaining Naruto's attention. Hey Kakashi Nisan I thought you were going on a mission? Naruto asked as he sat up. Actually, we are going on a S ranked mission, said Kakashi. What do you mean we, Kakashi, Ni? Asked Naruto not quite understanding what his surrogate brother meant. It's time Naruto. We are going to Azushio Gakur no Sato said Kakashi with his traditional eye smile. Really? Naruto asked. Yeah I want you to pack a week's worth of food, sleeping bag and anything else that you might need. Meet me at the north gate in an hour. See ya. Explained Kakashi as he left in a swirl of leaves. Naruto grinned ear to ear and also left but in a swirl of wind. One hour later north gate. Naruto and Kakashi just arrived at the north gate. Are you ready, Naruto? Asked Kakashi and received a nod in return. With that, both Kakashi and Naruto dashed to the treetops dashing from tree to tree, making their way to Uzushio Gakur no Sato. Finally. I've waited three years for this. Uzushio Gakur here we come. Thought Naruto excitedly as he tried to keep pace with Kakashi. One day later, a day had passed since Naruto and Kakashi left Konoha for Uzushio Gakur no Sato to find out much information on Naruto's dojutsu as possible. That's if they had any information. Naruto couldn't help but grin it was finally time to get some well-awaited answers about his dojutsu he's been asking himself for so long. Kakashini how far are we from Uzushio Gakur? 
asked an impatient Naruto. Kakashi sighed and replied we are almost there maybe another 10 or 15 minutes out. Naruto nodded and picked up his speed along with Kakashi. About 10 minutes had passed and Naruto and Kakashi jumped through the final brush of trees and landed on the ground. Naruto along with Kakashi looked on in shock of what they saw. What stood in front of them were the ruins of Azushiogakure no Sato. The village of Azushiogakure used, used to have several high-rise buildings but were destroyed by some powerful jutsus. There was a wide river that ran through the village and was gapped by large bridges. The village was also dominated by steep hills and water surrounding the village, so the only way in was through the front gate. No wonder how they were able to hold off those villages for so long. But in the end they couldn't withstand the onslaught of two major villages and help of others. Naruto looked on in shock and couldn't help but ball his fist. Kakashi ni who did this? Kakashi looked over at Naruto and responded Azushi Ogakura was said to believe destroyed by Kiri, Iwa, and some other small hidden villages. This is what started the third shinobi war. The Uzumaki were renowned for their few injutsu which led these villages to destroy Zoshiogakura because if one seal master can restrain one tailed beast without a hitch just think what an entire village could do. These villages were so consumed by fear that they joined forces and destroyed Uzu. But there was no accurate proof if they actually did this. A.10. Not a 100% sure if that's what started the third shinobi world war so if I'm wrong leave a review or PM. Thanks. Naruto sighed and nodded one day I will rebuild my ancestors' homeland and return it to its former glory. Hmm maybe I can even make it into my own personal headquarters or something. Thought Naruto as they walked to Azushio Gakur's village gates or what was left of it. Naruto and Kakashi walked up to what used to be the gates of the Uzumaki homeland. They continued forward and looked at all the destroyed buildings as they passed. Kakashi ni, where do you think we should look first? Asked Naruto as he was looking around what used to be his ancestors' homeland. Kakashi looked down at Naruto and responded, Maybe we should look at Ozukage's tower first and see if we can find anything in their archives or what's left of their archives. That makes sense, so we find these anchovies, and we might find something about my dujutsu, said Naruto and Kakashi could only sweat drop. Naruto, it's archives, not anchovies, said Kakashi and received a confused look from Naruto. Naruto hmm as if he was debating something and said they sound the same to me. Kakashi face faulted. Kakashi let out a long sigh okay it doesn't matter. Let's try to find the information we are looking for and leave as soon as possible. I have a weird feeling that something bad is going to happen. Which he received a nod in return from our orange clad shinobi. As they walked through the ruins of Ozoshiogakur, Naruto looked at all of the buildings that he had passed. He noticed most of the buildings that were destroyed or partially destroyed still had strong foundations. So if he did ever want to rebuild, he had something to work with, at least he thought he did. He wasn't necessarily good at building things, but he was hopeful. He would just have to hire someone if the need arose. He had his Tosan and Kasan savings that they left him. It wasn't as much as you might have thought, but it was enough to get it started if need be. The village in itself wasn't as big as Konoha hell it wasn't even half the size. But if he could convince Hiruzen Gigi, he might go for it. Especially if other Uzumakis heard of the rise of Ozoshiogakur, they would want to come back to their home of where it all started. It could be some type of base of operations for Konoha. The possibilities were endless. And on top of all of that he could bring back where his ancestors once lived and flourished. Because how Ushiogakura went out was bull. From what he read in a book about Ozoshio they were loving and kind people. And other villages being afraid of what the Uzumaki could do but didn't and decided to destroy Uzu was a load of crap. Naruto was brought out of his musings when both Kakashi and himself stopped in front of a building. I think this is the only place in Ozoshiogakura that isn't destroyed. Weird, huh? Said Naruto as he was examining the Yozukage Tower. The tower itself was very similar to the Hokage Tower in Konoha. The only difference between the two was that Uzu's symbol was a swirl that looked like a whirlpool a lot like Naruto's Dujutsu, minus the Tomos. What are we waiting for? Let's go, exclaimed Naruto he was about to start running to get inside before Kakashi grabbed his shoulder and shook his head no. Naruto was about to argue. But Kakashi gave Naruto a stern look. Kakashi made a cage Bushin and the Bushin started walking toward the tower. Right when the Bushin took one step in the front door a seal appeared above and below him and incinerated the Bushin. Naruto paled on seeing that. That is why you don't rush into things because you always have to look underneath the underneath. You have come a long way since I became your sensei but out of all things that I have taught you this is the most important. Always remember that Naruto because this will save you and your comrades life more than once, said Kakashi. Gulp. Okay, but how do we get in, asked Naruto. We should be good now if I'm correct that was only a one-time use. But just to make sure. He created another cage Bushin and the same as the other did but this time it didn't get incinerated. 
It gave a thumbs up and dispelled. Okay, that's our cue. Let's go, said Kakashi as he started walking and made his way into the tower with Naruto and Toh. Inside, Naruto looked around the Yozukage tower and just like the outside the inside was perfectly intact. How could all the buildings have some form of damage if not completely destroyed but this building looked like it had never been touched. It was just strange. If this is anything like the Hokage Tower the entrance to the archives should be, here Kakashi said and he opened a door that had stairs going down. Naruto, let's go Naruto nodded and walked past Kakashi and started descending down the stairs until he heard a thumb. He turned around to see Kakashi on his ass. Naruto sweat dropped. Kakashi ni quit being lazy and come on, Naruto said impatiently. The one-eyed and sheepishly scratched the back of his head. Yeah, about that, I can't ha hey, said Kakashi and received a blank stare in return from Naruto. What do you mean you can? Asked Naruto with a confused look. Well, how about you activate your dujutsu, and you'll find out for yourself, Kakashi said with an eye smile. Naruto sighed and nodded he closed his eyes and slowly opened them gone were the cerulean blue eyes replaced by red eyes with black swirls that looked like whirlpools and for his pupils were three connected black tomos. Now Naruto could see why Kakashi couldn't follow him. There was a barrier up. But it was not just a barrier it was a Uzumaki blood barrier. The blood barrier would prevent anyone except with Uzumaki blood to pass through. Oh, Naruto was definitely going to replicate this. He examined it for a couple more minutes before nodding to himself. Okay see ya, said Naruto as he was about to start walking down the stairs again only for Kakashi to say, what you're going to go down there by yourself, Naruto I don't think that's a good idea. Kakashi ni, I didn't come all the way out here just to turn back now. I need answers, and I need them now if you're going to stop me, you're more, and welcome to try. But first, you'll have to find a way to try and get past that blood barrier, said Naruto. Looking back at his surrogate brother and sensei, who slumped his shoulders in defeat. Okay, fine. Just be careful, said Kakashi and received a nod in return. I will. I promise, said Naruto making his way down the stairs. Kakashi saw Naruto's fleeting form inside. He is just like his parents more than he knows. Well I guess I could read Icha Icha it's a better time than any. Thought Kakashi pulling out his Icha Icha and giggled profusely oh Akiko you dirty dirty little girl you. He -he -he. with Naruto. Naruto made his way down the stairs and found himself in a large room. He looked to the left, and the room was rather plain and mostly empty, with a couple scrolls laying about. But when he looked to the right, he gasped. He walked over and found himself in front of a shrine, and at the top were three Uzumaki insignias in a triangle formation. Below the insignias were masks that were in three rows of nine. They all looked like Hanya masks. Between the masks and Naruto was a pit of black fire that was flickering wildly. The black fire intrigued Naruto he never seen fire that was black before and he could swear it could burn regular fire if given the chance. Naruto examined all the masks one by one until he noticed one was missing. He looked up and saw the kanji for Death God's mask. Naruto narrowed his eyes at that. Death God's mask I have a bad feeling about that. I don't know what that mask can do but it can't be good. But I'll worry about that later but first I have other priorities to take care of said Naruto activating his dujutsu. He looked around and noticed a huge swirl mark with three tomoes glowing in blue. He walked over to it and it started to spin as if it was hypnotizing him and before he could even react he was sucked inside. The wall glowed white for a second before it vanished with no sign of Naruto like if he was never there. With Naruto, Naruto groaned and sat up and started rubbing his head to try and rub off the grogginess. What the hell just happened? He thought, hello Naruto, I've been expecting you for quite some time now said someone with a deep and gruff voice. Ah! Naruto screamed and turned pale in color and started taking deep breaths. Oh I'm sorry I didn't mean to frighten you hey hey hey! said slash laugh the mysterious man. You didn't scare me just startled that's all. Phew, Naruto said and finally looked at the man who he was talking to who had a grin spread across his face and sitting in the lotus position on a pillow. The man was an elderly man with white long hair, mustache, and a squared off goatee. He also wore an old style armor like the first Hokage. Senju Hashirama. Under his armor he wore a long-sleeved shirt, black outfit, the shoulders of which bore the Yozoshiogakura's crest. On his back, were two swords and the handle of the swords curved. He also wore a forehead protector with the Uzumaki's insignia. Who are you? Asked Naruto eyeing the old man making sure he didn't have any ill intentions. The man seeing this side young people these days always want to fight. Sigh, the man pointed to the floor that had a pillow right in front of him. Come on, sit, sit. I'll answer anything that you want to know, said the man and Naruto obliged and sat down. Who are you? Asked Naruto again. My name is Uzumaki Arashi, founder of Ozushio Gakur no Sado and first Ozukage. 
It's a pleasure to finally meet you at last, Uzumaki Naruto, said the now named Arashi. Naruto widened his eyes and Uzumaki he was an Uzumaki and he knew his name. How do you know me? We never met before, so how do you know my name? And he received a laugh in return. Haha ha, well, I know everything about you Naruto. I know your name, your parents, your tendant, as he pointed at Naruto's stomach, and how your village treats you. Your village treats you as a pariah even though you are saving them every day of which you hold in your gut. I also know why you came here to Ozushio Gakura no Sato. I know you Naruto, because I've been watching you your entire life since the day you were born. You are a gifted young man who holds no hatred against anyone and that's why I chose you, said Arashi and shocking Naruto. Choose me for what? What did you choose me for? Asked Naruto not quite understanding the last part as Arashi closed his eyes with a smile. Why? To bear my dujutsu and to continue on the Uzumaki's legacy, that's why. That is why you came to Uzushio Gakura to find answers about your dujutsu, am I right? Said Arashi as he looked at Naruto with the same red eyes with black swirls that looked like whirlpools and for his pupils were three connected black tomos. Naruto gasped as he looked Arashi in the eyes. But why me? What's so special about me for you to even choose me? Naruto asked and received a sigh in return from Arashi. Naruto, why I chose you is because I know you can bring peace to this hate-filled world. You are gifted, smart. You have a stronger resolve than most, a never back down attitude and I believe you're natural born leader and one who would give his life for the people he loves without hesitation. You don't even have an ounce of hate in your heart after everything you have been put through. You are pure of heart, you are a true Uzumaki. This is why I chose you to bear the Shin Wagon, Mythic Eye, said Arashi in a commanding tone and shocking Naruto. Shin Wagon? Naruto asked and received a nod from Arashi. Yes the Shin Wagon. I chose you to bear the Uzumaki Dujutsu other than myself you are the only other person to unlock it, said Arashi and Naruto couldn't help but grin. So, do you know what the Shin Wagon does? Asked Naruto with an innocent smile and received a sigh in return. Are all young ones this impatient? Sigh. Well he has been waiting for a long time to know what the Shin Wagon's abilities are. Thought Arashi as he adjusted in his seat a little. Yes I do, said Arashi and he saw Naruto had a grin that threatened to split his face. A few seconds went by then a minute. And Naruto's smile slowly started to slip away after he realized that his Uzumaki brethren wasn't continuing. Well, Naruto said. Well what? Asked Arashi and Naruto face faulted. What does the Shin Wagon do? What's its abilities? Asked Naruto getting straight to the point. Oh. Well, why didn't you ask? I'll tell you what I know. Arashi started and gathered his thoughts he took a breath and continued. The Shin Wagon, as you know, is the Uzumaki Dujutsu. The Shin Wagon is powerful even more powerful than the Sharingan and Byakugan and could even rival the Rinnegan. What makes the Shin Wagon so powerful you can copy Kekei Genkai, with the exception of other Dujutsu. Shocking Naruto even further. Copying Kekei Genkai was unheard of, and yet it was possible. If I'm correct, you found out that you can read and understand few in Jutsu, sealing Jutsu, rather easily, correct? And received a nod in return from Naruto. The Shin Wagon, after copying a Kekei Genkai, will give you the elemental affinities. If you have already mastered the steps of elemental affinities similar to the Sharigan, you can copy the ninjutsus during combat and throw it right back. Trust me, it's a good surprise factor. So it'll be best if you master all five affinities. The few and jutsu aspect would be best if you spend a lot of time practicing because once you get good enough, you can possibly apply seals with just a glance. So, for instance, if you, by chance master the seal your father made, that made him one of the most feared shinobi in all of the elemental nations, and he had to use a kunai. What do you think you could do with just a glance? Hell, you could probably think of a place and harash in your way there. I wish I'd thought of something like that, but let me get back on track. Like I said before, you and I Naruto are the only Uzumaki who have unlocked the Shin Wagon. The potential of our dujutsu is up to the wielder. There are many more some that I was never able to discover, but I will not tell you them. Arashi said while standing up and patting himself done. What? What do you mean you will not tell me them? I came all the way to Uzushio Gakur to find out what the Shin Wagon is with my lazy sensei. Screamed Naruto letting out all of his frustration. Even though he was quite excited at the thought of endless possibilities of the Shin Wagon, with Kakashi. Aku. Whoa, that didn't sound good. I hope I'm not getting sick, said Kakashi as he rubbed his nose. Naruto has been gone for a while. I hope he is not getting me back for all them times that I was late for his training, Kakashi said to no one in particular. He shrugged his shoulders and went back to reading his Icha Icha. With Naruto and Arashi, I will not tell you them because you will have to figure it out yourself. That is why. 
you have to figure things out for yourself or you will not learn anything. I just can't give you all the answers on a silver platter. I had to figure out most of them myself, Arashi said casting a stone face stare towards Naruto making the orange-clad boy flanch. Naruto sighed in defeat and nodded. Arashi smiled and walked over to where Naruto was sitting and gestured him to stand up. Naruto before I go I would like to give you a present that will help you along the way that saved my life more than once, Arashi said gaining the young boy's interest. And what would that be? Asked Naruto. This, one of the most useful and if used properly can be powerful ability that only a few Uzumaki could attain. Chakra Chains Typically the chains would come out of the user's back but not ours, our chains can come out of any terrain without hindering us in any way. Ours are the true form of the chakra chains and can be utilized in combat and even be incorporated in ninjutsu in an efficient manner, Arashi said as he flicked his wrist and there were five chakra chains shot up from the ground that were silver in color, with kunai-like spikes at the end of the chains, floating above his head as if awaiting orders from their master. Naruto couldn't help but stare wide-eyed. Arashi looked at Naruto marvel over the chakra chains and snapped his fingers, and they disappeared. That is so cool. How do I learn it? Are you going to teach before Naruto could bombard the old Uruzumaki with more questions he put his hand on top of Naruto's head. Before Naruto could ask what he was doing there was a large chakra spike and Naruto could feel a power rise inside of his body like the day he activated his shin wagon. And like before, it vanished. Naruto looked up to see Arashi with a soft smile and said go ahead. Give it try. Naruto did as he was told and focused. He opened his eyes and right in front of him was a chakra chain but unlike Arashi's his was pitch black in color and the kunai-like spike was red in color. Naruto couldn't help but grin ear to ear. Thank you, Uzumaki Arashi. Thank you for everything, said Naruto as he gave a deep bow. It's no problem what is family for anyway. Well I got to get going see ya, Arashi said in a cheerful tone. Wait. Will I ever see you again? Asked Naruto with a downtrodden look. One day we will meet again. The day you meet the QB, come back and see me. That fox is a mean bastard. But I personally think he is misunderstood, and from what Mito-sama said, he is a big softy. And with that, Arashi disappeared as if he was never there. Naruto looked around the room and realized there were no exits. How the hell am I supposed to get out of here? Thirty minutes later, Kakashi was reading his book in peace until he noticed Naruto climbing up the stairs. Kakashi couldn't help but sigh in relief that Naruto was okay and not injured. Yo! Did you find what you were looking for? Asked Kakashi and received a nod in return, which Kakashi I smiled at. Good, then let's go. The sooner we get back to Konoha the better, Kakashi said and Naruto couldn't help but nod. He was missing Konoha even though he was gone for a couple days. Hey Kakashi, sensei before we go can I check something out real quick I'll be a couple minutes at most, Kakashi sighed and nodded. Naruto ran off to Kamino's where in the Yozukage tower. Kakashi yawned and leaned against the wall with book in hand. With Naruto. Naruto was up in the Yozukage's office that didn't look no worse for wear drawing some sort of intricate seal in the above average size scroll that he had on his person. After he was done, he started to create 50 cage bushings at a time before sealing them in the scroll. It was some sort of containment seal. He stored 500 bushings in the scroll and summoned one more bushin. You know what to do. Try to get the village cleaned up as much as you can. Once you are about to run out of chakra, summon another cage bushin in your place. Don't summon more than five once you dispel. Got it? Said Naruto and received a salute in return as he grabbed the scroll from the original. One of Naruto's goals now was to restore his ancestors' homeland. One day, he would and hopefully whoever was left of the Uzumaki clan would return. The cage bushins could clean up quite a bit but even the 500 cage bushins wouldn't be enough. But it was only the beginning. Naruto looked around the Yozukage's office and noticed a couple scrolls laying about and there were some on the shelves throughout the room. There were mostly few Injutsu scrolls which he was glad to take for himself and pulled out a storage seal and stored all of the scrolls he found into the seal. He was about to leave when he noticed a sword in a glass case. He walked over and opened the glass case before pulling the sword out. The sword just like his own, it was another katana. This sword's sheath was pitch black and had the Uzumaki's insignia in red on both sides of the hilt. The hilt was also pitch black with two dragons, one black and one white intersecting with each other on both sides. Similar to his own katana, weird. The katana was approximately 27 inches long, and the hilt of the blade was another 10 inches in length. He pulled the sword from its sheath and the blade was blood red in color with black uzumaki swirls on both sides of the, the blade. Naruto looked at the sword quizzically. It was the same as his sword just opposite in color. Did the uzumakis craft more of these or were they the only two? 
I guess time would only tell as he sealed the sword in his storage seal and left. A few minutes later Naruto appeared in front of Kakashi with a grin plastered on his face who looked a little fatigued. What did you do? Asked Kakashi suspiciously and single eye narrowed. I only gathered some of my ancestors scrolls and some other things. Well, what are we waiting for I'm hungry and I want some Ijiraku ramen before the day ends so let's go. Replied Naruto dashing off through Uzu. Dot 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 sigh. I hope he knows that we are two days travel away from the village. Oh well thought Kakashi before he dashed off after Naruto. Two days later Hokage Mansion midday. Sarutobi Hiruzen was cursing his luck because he was fighting the worst enemy of all cages. Paperwork. Damn you Minato. Leaving me with all this stamp paperwork. The aged Hokage thought while rubbing his temples from the headache that was threatening to split his head in two. There was a knock at his door and with a heavy sigh he said come in. Naruto and Kakashi walked through the door and Hiruzen couldn't help but smile. He didn't know why but Naruto could always bring a smile to his face no matter how bad of a mood he was in. Hey GG. Mission accomplished, said Naruto in a happy tone. Hiruzen took out his trusty pipe and tobacco and began packing it. Really, that's wonderful news. So what did you find out in Ozushio? He said as he lit up his pipe. Naruto had a grin that threatened to split his face. Before I tell you, could you send your Anbu out please? The aged Hokage nodded and with a hand gesture the Anbu left the room. Naruto walked up to a surrogate grandfather's and slammed his hand on Hiruzen's desk and said Fu and Jutsu, seal of privacy shocking Kakashi and Hiruzen. Whoa Kakashi, I didn't know you were teaching Naruto-kun and Fu and Jutsu. The aged Hokage said taking a puff out of his pipe. I, didn't, care to explain Naruto asked Kakashi with his single eye narrowed. What were one of the first things you taught me, Kakashi, sensei? Deception is the shinobi's greatest weapon hey, hey, hey said Naruto with a grin and received an eye smile in return. You're a quick learner Naruto Atoto Kakashi said with an eye smile. And you're a good sensei Kakashi Niharuzen couldn't help but smile. Okay, getting back on track what happened in Nozushio? Asked Hiruzen for the second time. So for the next next 45 minutes Naruto told Hiruzen and Kakashi what happened in Nozushio Gakur no Sato. The more Naruto relayed the information the more shocked they became. And that about sums it up. Finished Naruto and he couldn't help but snicker seeing the faces of his surrogate grandfather and brother's faces. Both of their jaws were hitting the ground and eyes the size as dinner plates. Priceless. You just might become Hokage Naruto-kun, wait he can become Hokage and I can go back into retirement. He can have all this wretched paperwork. He always wanted to be Hokage and I always wanted to retire it's a win, win. It would be a few years maybe I could get Suan back, yes that could work yes. 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 Ha ha. Hiruzen thought with a mischievous look in his eyes. A cold chill went up Naruto's spine from looking at his GG eyes. I have a bad feeling about something and I don't like it. After shaking off the cold chill he had, he looked at his surrogate grandfather with a serious expression that Kakashi and the aged Hokage took notice of. There's something else, Hokage-sama said Naruto which got raised eyebrows by both. There were these masks that were hanged up below the Ozukage tower. There should have been 27 but one was missing. Naruto said and Hiruzen had a grave expression on his face. A.N. I know the masks weren't originally in Ozushio Gakur. Naruto, which one was it? Hiruzen said. The. The Death God's mask, said Naruto with a serious expression. As I feared. Sigh. I have a feeling that will be the death of me. Damn I'm getting too old for this shit. Thought the aged Hokage leaning back in his chair while nursing his temples. Hokage-sama if I may ask what is the Death God's mask? Asked the one-eyed Jounin. It's nothing you need to worry about, Kakashi, said Hiruzen and received a nod from Kakashi. So are we done now GG? I'm kinda hungry and Kakashi Ni and I are going to get some training done before the day is up asked Naruto. I'm sorry to have to tell you this Naruto-kun but Kakashi has another mission today. Maybe Kakashi can find you someone to take his place? Said Hiruzen while looking at the one-eyed Jounin. Kakashi grinned but not that Naruto or the aged Tokage could tell with his mask on. Ooh. I have the perfect person for my little bro. Like Kukakashi ni? Asked Naruto not realizing what his surrogate brother had planned for him. Twenty minutes later. Naruto, your flames of youth shine brightly today. As our warm up we will run around Konoha 100 times. And if we can't do that we will do 1001 arm push UPS. And if we can't do that. I'll let you guess who that is. He stood at 5 foot 11 inches. He had a green jumpsuit with a shiny bull haircut and overly grown eyebrows which gave Naruto the chills. Naruto had a dumbfounded look on his face after hearing and seeing the green-clad shinobi. Out of everyone Kakashi ni could have picked he picked this guy, troublesome. Great now I'm starting to talk like Shikamaru, troublesome. Damn it, Naruto let's begin. 
said slash yelled guy after he finished there was a green blur and a dust cloud following in his wake. He says that's a warm up screw this I'm going to go get some ramen, said Naruto as he's starting making his way towards Ichiraku ramen. Five minutes later. Hey Oji san. Start me off with my usual I'm starved, said Naruto and sat up at the counter. Tuchi came out of the back and gave Naruto a grandfatherly smile. Well, well if it isn't my best customer. How have you been Naruto? I haven't seen you for a while, what's new? You know the usual training day in day out trying to better myself and going to the academy. Where's Ayame Nechan? Replied Naruto as Tuchi handed him a bowl of miso ramen. She went to go get some more supplies. Knowing you, you might clean me out by the time that she gets back haha <laughs> said slash laughed Tuchi while Naruto sheepishly scratched the back of his head. For the next 30 minutes Naruto ate and talked with Tuchi. After Naruto was done he paid his tab and left with a satisfied look on his face. What should I do it's about to get dark maybe I should just call it a night. Naruto was about to make his way to his apartment before a green blur was heading right for him Okami, not this guy again. Naruto, you call that running? And before Naruto knew he was punched in the face by a powerful punch by the green clad shinobi and was sent right through a wall. Naruto's luck must have ran out that day because he was sent through the ladies hot springs. Ah. Naruto what do you think you're doing in here? Get him. Yeah hold him down we will show him not to peek on us again. The women screamed as they ruthlessly beat down Naruto and only one thought went through our favorite blonde's mind why does this shit always have to happen to me you aoi. Guy was not expecting for that to happen he twisted on his heel and started whistling as if nothing had happened. He could still hear Naruto's pleads for them to stop but it fell on deaf ears. I'm sorry my youthful student but I cannot help you. And with that he blurred out of sight. Naruto's apartment one hour later. Naruto was laying on his bed with his face all bruised and swelled and was thinking of ways to get back at the green clad shinobi. I swear to Kami if I see that overgrown eyebrow freak again I will beat him to a pulp. Oh and Kakashini I got something special for you here hey ha ha, cough, cough, said Naruto to no one in particular. You better hold on to your icha icha you lazy cyclops or it might burn to a crisp ha ha ha, cough. Damn this cough. Yawn. Time to get some sleep. Next day, Naruto woke up to knocking at his door. Naruto rubbed the grogginess out of his eyes and got up and answered the door. Yeah but he was cut off as someone grabbed the back of his collar and picked him up. Hey what's the big idea? Yelled Naruto as his eyes adjusted to the sun. Naruto I'm taking you to the academy you have missed the past week of my class and who will not miss anymore. Yelled his other surrogate brother Iruka. Damn I forgot that I had the academy today. I'll just switch out with a cage bush and at lunch and go out for some training. Thought Naruto. Iruka sensei could I at least get showered and dressed before we go please? Asked Naruto but the scarred Chunin wasn't having any of it. No. We are going straight to the academy and besides you are already three hours late. Said slash yelled Iruka with a tick mark on his forehead. Okay, geez sorry I was caught up in dreamland until you had to ruin it. Naruto yelled back further increasing Iruka's tick mark by tenfold. What was that? The only thing you do is sleep. If you put more of your attention in studying and training you wouldn't be the dead last of your class but no you prefer to sleep the whole day away. Iruka fired back hoping Naruto would see the error of his ways. If only you knew Iruka sensei, if only you knew. Thought Naruto looking away from Iruka. Iruka mentally gave himself a pat on the back for a job well done. Out talking the loud mouth prankster deserved an award. Can you ATL East put me down, Iruka sensei? Asked a hopeful Naruto which elicited a glare from Iruka. No. Iruka said as he used his signature big-headed no jutsu. Geez okay, okay you didn't have to yell for crying out loud I'm right next to you, said Naruto as he folded his arms in defeat. At the academy five minutes later, Iruka walked into his class while still holding Naruto by the back of his collar dragging him into the class all the kids in the class just laughed at Naruto. Haha <laughs> well look who finally showed up to class late again, huh Naruto said a laughing Kiba who had a white dog on his head the dog's name was Akamaru. Shut up dog breath. Naruto fired back sticking his tongue out at the boy. What was that? Yelled a enraged Kiba as he stood up from his desk ready to pummel the blonde. That is enough. Naruto go to your seat. It's time to begin today's lesson. Today we will be Lir Iruka was interrupted by the lunch bell that went off. Iruka grew a tick mark the size of the Hokage Tower. When he turned around the only person that was still in class was Shikamaru who stood up and yawned. Troublesome said the lazy genius making his way out of the classroom. Nuuuto o o o screamed Iruka at the top of his lungs. Everyone in Konoha could hear that scream throughout the village. Outside of the academy, Iruka sensei is really pissed at you Naruto, Yun. Why are you always late and when you're late you give a terrible excuse? 
asked a slightly interested Nara as he laid down next to Naruto underneath a tree with Kuji sitting next to him munching on a bag of chips. There are not excuses it's the truth, and they are not terrible either. Naruto fired back, which received two sweat drops from the duo. Oh really? And I quote sorry I got lost on the path of life or sorry I'm late there was a black cat that crossed my path so I had to take the long way or before the Nara could continue he was cut off by Naruto. Okay, I get it. I don't need a lecture from a guy who sleeps all day in class. Naruto stopped as he stood up and dusted himself off well guys I'll be back in a few, said Naruto, walking away from the duo. Yun. Where are you going class starts again in 30 minutes and knowing you you'd pro Bailey be late, again, I'll be back on time. No need to worry. Replied Naruto waving over his shoulder leaving the Nara to his thoughts and the Akimichi to his eating. Seven minutes later in a random alley, Cage Bush and Nojutsu whispered our favorite blonde. Hey boss, what's up? Asked Naruto. Go back to the academy and dispel yourself afterward and be discreet, okay? Oh, and no sleeping, Iruka is already pissed at me. Finished the real Naruto and received a salute from the clone. Finally, time to go do some real training said naruto leaving in a swirl of wind training ground nine ah it feels good to be back ah uh, what are you doing here said naruto with narrowed eyes what naruto was looking at was maito guy doing one-armed push-ups in his private training ground oh if it isnt my youthful student how are you doing on this youthful day naruto kun said slash yelled the green clad shinobi jumping up from his position could have been better but you didn't answer my question what are you doing here Asked Naruto losing patience with the overly grown eyebrowed man. Kakashi told me where to find you if I couldn't find you. Are you ready to begin your training? Today I will be helping you with Daijutsu and increasing your speed. Are you ready? Roared Guy with anticipation as he stood in his stance crouched down with one arm behind his back and the other in the come hither motion. I did say I would beat him into pulp the next time I see him. But he is a high jown and level shinobi while I'm only low chunin. But that's not stopping me from kicking his ass. Thought Naruto slipping into his daijutsu stance while whispering Kai releasing his gravity seals and activating his shin wagon. Hajime, begin, yelled Guy while blurring out of sight and giving Naruto a right hook to Naruto's face only for him to poof out of existence getting a raised eyebrow from the green clad shinobi. When did he create a cage bushin? Wondered Guy while settling into his Goken stance. Naruto was hiding in the trees about 20 meters away from Guy. I know I can beat him in a heads up Daijutsu brawl he isn't called the green beast of Konoha for nothing. Hmm but why not send in a couple hundred cage bushins, that could wear him down, maybe. Thought Naruto putting his fingers in the cross seal and yelled cage bushin no jutsu. 200 cage bushins surrounded guy the latter couldn't help but smile. Yes Naruto kun show me your flames of youth. With that said all the cage bushins charged Guy hoping to land a hit on the green jumpsuit wearing Jounin. Guy disappeared in a show of speed and started decimating the cage bushin as if it was a walk in the park. Wave after wave of bushins puffed out of existence. Only one thought went through Naruto's mind watching the display of speed and skill of Guy. He's as ruthless as Kakashini. This is insane how can he be so quick it's Naruto turned around just to see a fist impact his face from behind. Naruto went flying in the opposite direction of said fist and crashed into the ground creating a small crater. There is my youthful student. Are you ready to continue Naruto-kun? Guy said while giving the nice guy pose and received a nod in return. Hajime. But this time it was Naruto who went on to attack blurring out of sight shocking guy of what type of speed he had. At the age of 10 he shouldn't be that fast. But guy wasn't a jounin for nothing blocking the axe kick Naruto sent to guy's head. Guy grabbed Naruto's foot and threw our favorite blonde towards a tree only for Naruto to catch himself in midair and sticking to said tree not taking his shin wagon off of him. Naruto launched himself towards Guy's location with his fist cocked back ready to deliver a device dating blow to him. He was ready to block it but at the last second Naruto sealessly created a cage bush and twisting him in midair Guy not expecting this took a bone cracking punch to his face making him jump back keeping his distance away from the blonde. He's as clever and unpredictable as his father. Ha hey. How youthful. Thought Guy, wiping away a bit of blood coming from his lip. Naruto continued on his pursuit, throwing a spinning back kick, which Guy caught effortlessly with his hand. Naruto, using his momentum, spun his other leg around and brought it down like an axe kick, intending on ending the fight. Guy brought his forearm up and blocked the kick only for his arm to go slightly numb, surprising the Jounin. Guy let go of Naruto to dodge two black chains that shot from the ground narrowly missing the green spandex Jounin. Guy not wanting to be on the defensive anymore disappeared and reappeared behind Naruto kicking him in the back. 
Naruto was sent flying in the opposite direction before another chain shot from the ground catching the blonde and placing him on the ground. Naruto got back in his stance looking ready to continue before Guy raised his hand for him to stop. You are very good Naruto, very good. But you have a lot of work ahead of you. Kakashi has trained you well. Until next time my youthful student, said Guy as he was about to turn to leave only for Naruto to stop him. What? That's it? We just started and now you're leaving? Asked a confused Naruto. Yes. Kakashi wanted me to test you. You knew you couldn't beat me so you tested me by sending in all those cage bushin. But you didn't realize how fast I truly was and that's where you messed up. You let your guard down thinking you were in the clear but as a shinobi you have to keep your battle senses at max because if I was a enemy shinobi you'd be dead. But you have great battle awareness but there is always room to improve so keep training and one day we can spar as equals, said Guy surprising Naruto that he could actually be serious when the time calls for it. Naruto couldn't help but smile and gave Guy a thumbs up. It's a deal. The next time we spar we will be fighting as equals and I will win, declared Naruto and received a nice guy pose from Guy. Before I go Naruto would you like a green jumpsuit like mine? Asked slash yelled Guy pulling a jumpsuit out of nowhere. Not a chance said Naruto as he shunned Shin away before Guy could ask him if he would like black hair dye and bushy eyebrows just like himself. You could find Guy crying anime tears and sulking by a tree why will nobody take my gifts? Sniff. What is that sound, said Guy making his way down to find a boy that looked to be a year older than Naruto hitting a tree stump with his fists then switching to kicks. He heard the boy say if I cannot do 1000 kicks I will do 2000 push-ups. There was only one thought in Guy's head he reminds me of myself. Hmm. With Naruto, I have three more years of the academy and to better myself. I will have to push my body to its limits. If I want to protect my precious people then the real training begins starting tomorrow. Thought Naruto making his way towards his apartment to get ready for his new training regimen. Chapter 6 So you wanna get stronger huh? Asked the ex Anbu commander and received a firm nod in return by Naruto. Naruto and Kakashi were at training ground 9 and Naruto explained to him his reasons on becoming stronger than he already was. Well alright. I was going to wait until a year before you graduated the academy to start this but I guess it's a better time than any, said Kakashi. So what are you going to teach me a new jutsu, more endurance training? teach me a new taijutsu Naruto was cut off by his ramblings by Kakashi. Nope. With this, said Kakashi while pulling out a piece of paper. Kakashi sensei if this is another one of your jokes I'm going to tie you up and make you watch me burn every single one of your icha ichas one by one, said Naruto in a menacing tone and received a sweat drop in return. No Naruto, I can assure you this isn't one of my jokes and this is an average paper Naruto it's chakra paper. Explained Kakashi and received a raised eyebrow in return. Oh. Now I remember. This paper can tell me what my element of Indy is. Naruto replied with a grin. Kakashi nodded and said yes, Naruto you are correct. Chakra can be converted into one of five different elements, to perform jutsu. But you can perform a jutsu without having the affinity for that element, but the only downside to this is that it won't be as powerful or strong and will take more chakra to cast than for someone who does have the affinity for that element. You with me so far? Asked Kakashi to see if he still had Naruto's attention or not. When he received a nod in return by said blonde he continued the five affinities are water, earth, fire, wind, and lightning. Each country specializes in one of the elements mostly but can have all types. For instance, we are the fire country, so we have a lot of fire users but we also have other kinds too, like me, I am a lightning user. Most people have have one affinity maybe two to start off with. But as you work hard and get older you can get more affinities. Okay I think I get it. So how do I know what affinity I have? Naruto asked his Lizzie one-eyed Jounin sensei. For water the paper will get moist, earth the paper will turn to dust, fire the paper will turn to ash, wind will split the paper in two, and if lightning the paper will crumble. Now take the paper and pour a little bit of chakra into it and it will tell you what your affinity is. Kakashi said handing Naruto the chakra paper. Naruto nodded pouring some chakra into the paper. Naruto once he saw the paper split in two. But before he could celebrate the other two have shredded to pieces. Which received a raised eyebrow from Kakashi. What does that mean Kakashi sensei? Asked Naruto looking at his sensei quizzically. Kakashi hmm while scratching his chin before he replied well it would seem you have a naturally high affinity for wind. A really high one in fact. I never seen this before we will come back to that later. Since we know what affinity you have let's go to the next step. Kakashi walked to the nearest tree and grabbed two leaves off one of the nearest branches. Kakashi walked back to where Naruto was standing and handed him one of the leaves. Now for the next step. The next step you have to cut the leaf down the middle by only using your wind affinity. 
explained Kakashi as he was holding one of the leaves and using his lightning affinity made the leaf crumble up. Like so. While you work on this exercise I'm going to go report to Hokage-sama I should be back within the hour. Oh and before I go you should use the cage Bushin. Later. Finished Kakashi leaving in a swirl of leaves. Okay, seems easy enough. Cage Bushin no Jutsu. There was a large cloud of smoke when the smoke cleared it revealed 200 copies of the orange clad shinobi in training. Alright you heard the cyclops let's get this done. With a chorus of high they began focusing to cut the leaf down the middle which would be a lot harder than the blonde initially intended it to be. With Kakashi. So you are beginning elemental affinity training with Naruto-kun. Quite impressive for a 10 year old boy I might add. So, is there anything else Kakashi-san? Asked the aged Hokage noticing Kakashi's slight nervous posture it was on coming from Kakashi but decided not to call him on it just yet. Yes Hokage-sama. I think it's time to test Naruto's capabilities with his shin wagon, if you don't mind. Kakashi said and Hiruzen couldn't help but smirk. So that's why he is nervous thought the aged Hokage while taking a puff out of his trusty pipe. Exhaling Hiruzen replied well that's your call, not mind. But if you think he is ready. Tenzo. Not even a second later there was an Anbu kneeling to the Hokage awaiting what his leader's orders were. Tenzo you are to accompany Kakashi-san here to training ground 9 it's time for you to help train Naruto-kun I already informed you and what so you and Kakashi-san may take your leave unless there is anything else, Kakashi-san. When he saw Kakashi shake his head no he dismissed them. So Tenzo it's been a while how have you been? Asked Kakashi towards Tenzo who in return gave a simple shrug. Tenzo had short brown hair and black, almond, shaped eyes. He wore the standard attire for the Anbu, a sword was strapped to his back. He wore a mask that resembled a cat's face covered in green, and red markings, and he had a tattoo that resembled he was in Anbu. Nothing, just going on missions really and since you retired I have become Anbu commander of our old platoon. Replied Tenzo. That's good to hear. I'm honored to say that Team Ro was left in excellent hands, said Kakashi while they were making their way to training ground 9. Thanks Kakashi that means a lot, especially coming from you. Replied Tenzo. Oh it's nothing. Let's pick up the pace I'm sure Naruto will be ecstatic to find out what's next I have planned for him. When he received a nod they took to the rooftops and made their way to training ground 9. With Naruto. Naruto was still trying to cut the leaf in two but was finding it rather difficult to do. He was able to cut the bottom of the leaf maybe a couple centimeters at most but like they say every journey always begins with a first step. Naruto thought this was going to be a lot easier than he had imagined but not even an hour later he cut the leaf not by much but enough to be called progress. Naruto was about to continue his exercise when someone called out to him. Yo! Naruto I'm back and I brought a guest with me, said Kakashi making his way towards Naruto or the one he thought was Naruto. Hey Kakashi sensei, who's this? Asked Naruto looking at the Anbu who was standing next to his sensei. Naruto, this is Tenzo. Tenzo this is Naruto said Kakashi. Nice to meet you kid, said Tenzo. Yay, likewise. Replied Naruto looking back at Kakashi. The real reason I brought Tenzo out here is because Tenzo has a special Keke Genkai. Hokage-sama and I want to know if your Dujutsu can actually copy a Keke Genkai. So Naruto activate your Shin Wagon and let's get started, Tenzo if you will. Without needing Kakashi to elaborate Tenzo went through a few complex hand seals while ending on the snake hand seal and said Mokobushin no Jutsu. Something started coming out the back of Tenzo's neck and before Naruto knew there was an exact replica of Tenzo himself. Makuten, would release? Asked a shock Naruto looking in the general direction of Tenzo and his Mokobushin. Yes Naruto. We want to see if you can copy the Makuten. While your Bushins work on the leaf cutting exercise you will be learning this. Explained Kakashi looking at the shock state of Naruto. I mean who could blame him Makuten was supposed to be only special to only Senju Hashirama. But here is a man who he never met before and he can use the Makuten. Not something you see every day. Alright Naruto, Tenzo said knocking Naruto out of his stupor. The hand seals are tiger, dog, and snake. What you want to do is similar to the cage bush and just imagine replicating yourself from yourself. It might be a little uncomfortable when you use it the first few times but you will get used to it. Now. To know how you are doing it right you will feel a pull at the back of your neck once you feel that pull add more chakra into the jutsu. That's it Naruto, now give it a try. Finished Tenzo and looked at Naruto with calculating eyes when Naruto went through the hand seals that Tenzo told him to use. About 45 minutes had passed since Naruto began his new form of training with Tenzo and Kakashi. Naruto was still trying to do the jutsu but to no avail. For the life of him this jutsu was nearly impossible to do. He wasn't going to give because that was against his nindo, ninja way. Okay Naruto you have the right idea but you're not adding enough chakra. 
Here watch me again with you Shin Wagon, Tenzo said gaining Naruto's attention. Naruto watching Tenzo with calculating eyes making sure he didn't miss a thing, Naruto noticed how much chakra Tenzo used which was significantly higher than a regular cage Bushin and noticed the clone coming out behind his neck before making a perfect replica of Tenzo himself. I think I got it this time thanks Tenzo sensei, Naruto said and received a nod in return. Another 20 minutes went by and Naruto was getting rather frustrated. Maybe, he was doing something wrong or maybe he was thinking too hard on the matter or maybe Kakashi, Tenzo and Tenzo's Moku Bushins were distracting him by playing cards and Kakashi's complaints about how unfair it was that there were more of Tenzo than himself. He couldn't put his finger on it but if he could choose it would have been the last one. So Naruto decided to do it one more time before he took a break. Deciding to put considerably more chakra than he had been in the technique. Naruto felt a weird pull at the back of his neck as if something was trying to get out. Remembering what Tenzo said Naruto continued to pour more chakra into the technique he was casting. Once he felt the odd sensation at the back of his neck disappear he heard clapping. Great job Naruto, you did it. They don't look perfect but it's a great start, Tenzo said and Naruto raised an eyebrow and turned around. Behind Naruto was three Moku Bushins of himself like Tenzo said they're not perfect but it's a good start. The Bushins looked like puppets more than anything. But it was a great start. I honestly didn't think you could do it. But I had a slight hope of you pulling it off I would have expected a Bushin but not three, but who's counting? Tenzo said in excited tone while digged into his bag and pulled out a scroll fairly bigger than the average scrolls people use on daily basis and handed it to Naruto. Here Naruto. This is a gift for me to you. This scroll contains a lot of the Makuten's abilities along with jutsus for you to work on. I will stop by once a month to see how your progression is in Makuten and help you strengthen your Makuten over time. Well it's time for me to go and report to Hokage-sama about this, later. With that Denzo left in a swirl of leaves. Naruto couldn't help but grin ear to ear. I did it Kakashi-sensei can you believe it? Kakashi I smiled which to this day Naruto couldn't understand how Kakashi could do that. Great job Naruto. Why you work on perfecting the Mokobushin, I will go get some food for the both of us. But before he could go Naruto told him to wait for a second. Yeah, what is it Naruto? Asked the one-eyed Jounin. I was just wondering if I could get another one of those chakra papers to test something out. Replied the blonde shinobi in training. Kakashi shrugged and handed him one of his chakra papers before leaving in a swirl of leaves as well. Testing his theory Naruto channeled some chakra into the paper and what happened next made him grin ear to ear. The paper tore in two one side turned to dust and the other side became moist before shredding into bits. Hey so if I copy Kakegenke I also gain the affinity for that Kakegenke. Makes sense so I guess this is one of the abilities that Uzumaki Arashi decided to let me learn on my own. Oh yeah, things are just starting to get interesting. Now time for the real training to begin. With that Naruto began to perfect the Moku Bushins while his cage Bushins still worked on the leaf cutting exercise. One week later, deciding to take a break from training Naruto decided to go to the academy as himself for a change instead of sending one of his cage Bushins. Kakashi was also sent away on a mission for the rest of the week so Naruto essentially decided to go to the academy. Naruto walked into the classroom and walked to the nearest seat one that was by the window. Naruto sat down and stared out the window just thinking how far he came through the years by Kakashi's tutelage. He couldn't help but smirk. Naruto could take on his entire class with his hands tied behind his back and blinded folded and still wouldn't break a sweat. Even the master of brooding the one and only, Uchiha Sasuke couldn't match him. Naruto could beat him in every aspect of the shinobi maybe besides genjutsu. Naruto could dispel genjutsu thanks to Kakashi teaching him how. The only genjutsus that could trap Naruto are a rank and higher, which is pretty good for a 10 year old child. Naruto was knocked out of his musing when classroom door was slammed open and of course the almighty, the elite, and of course the brooding king, the one and only Uchiha Sasuke walked in with a horde of fangirls following in suit. If thy speaks thy devil's name he will appear. Damn it why can't it be the other way around? I mean seriously look at the way he walks as if we should be honored to be within his presence. What he needs is to remove that rusty metal spike pole out of his ass and maybe he might not be much of an ass. Naruto looked away from the last Uchiha and continued to stare out the window until he heard. You're in my seat Dobi so I suggest you get out of it, said the as I mean the brooding king. Naruto turned towards Sasuke and started to pick his ear with his pinky I'm sorry. You say something team. Somewhere in fire country, Kakashi looked up from his battle he was having with a missing nin and pumped a fist in the air with an eye smile which weirded out the missing ninja and yelled I knew I would get him to say it one day. After he proclaimed that Kakashi went back to normal as if nothing had happened and continued fighting the utterly confused missing nin. Back with Naruto. I have an odd feeling that I made someone's day thought Naruto before shrugging it off. I said you were in my seat Dobi now get up, 
Sasuke said in an angered voice it ticked him off that someone was ignoring him, him and Elite, yeah. Naruto Baka get up that Sasuke-kun seat. Screeched the pink banshee and Sasuke's biggest fangirl, Haruno Sakura. Ignoring the the pink banshee's outburst he looked at Sasuke and grinned ear to ear using the sleight of hand he stuck an explosion tag one of his own creations to the bottom of the chair and another underneath the chair beside him. It won't kill Sasuke but it will leave a serious bruise to where he won't be able to sit down for a week. And he figured that Sakura would sit next to her precious Sasuke-kun so she was just the added bonus to this friendly erm. Prank. Yeah prank. Oh sorry. MC Brood MC Broodington here is your seat that you so love and cherish maybe this chair can help dig out the 10 foot rusty metal spike pole out your ass as well. Oh well that's not my problem later. Replied Naruto standing up and walking back to the back of the room and ignoring the pathetic excuse K.I. directed his way by his fangirls. Sasuke only replied to that was his signature line to those he didn't deem worthy with a simple H and he sat down along with Sakura by his side who was pestering him for dates but Sasuke just ignored her requests. Naruto looked at the clock and counted down 3, 2, 1. Hey now. Kai, release, he whispered. What everyone heard and saw next was a boom with the brooding king and his trusty fangirl aka the pink banshee were sent flying into the air before falling face first on the classroom floor. Both Sasuke and Sakura's rear ends were smoking from the explosion that just occurred by Naruto's doing. The whole classroom erupted in uproar of laughter from what just transpired. And for icing on the cake Naruto said between his laughter haha. Well I guess ha. The chair decided not to help but instead shoved the pole even deeper in your anal cavity ha ha ha. But before anyone else could do or say anything the door opened and in came their sensei, Iruka. Iruka looked at what happened to his classroom and saw two smoking chairs or for what's left for that matter. He also saw his top two students still laying on the floor with their butts smoking they were in too much pain to move and would hear a groan here and there. Who did this, yelled Iruka using his big headed no jutsu on the class. Kiba was still laughing and holding his ribs from the lack of oxygen when he was finally to speak ha ha ha. Phew. I think we all know who did this Iruka sensei, PSSHTTT ha ha ha. Who could blame Kiba that was hilarious with a capital H. Iruka gained numerous of tick marks knowing now who did the stunt and when he looked around the classroom for a certain blonde but did not see him. He did notice the back window open where that certain blonde could have escaped. Iruka could not resist the urge to yell in frustration. Nuuanto o. Yeah the next three years are going to be rather interesting. Three years later day before graduation. It was early morning and people starting opening their shops for a new day. It was the day before graduation and Naruto now of the age of 13 years old was still snoozing in his bed. Well that was before the alarm clock started going off and if fate should have it the alarm clock was destroyed by Naruto's fist. Naruto groggily sat up in his bed before looking over at what was left of his alarm clock and shrugged before he went back to blissful sleep. During these last three years Naruto's growth was tremendous, and even saying that was an understatement. Naruto far surpassed Kakashi's expectations in his skill as a shinobi even though Naruto wasn't officially a shinobi for Konoha yet. Naruto's daijutsu was meant to high down and level even when he hit his gravity seals on regular basis which would make even Mito guy sweat and that's saying something. When he had his gravity seals off he was far faster than any chunin and most jounin but that's a different story. But being realistic Naruto's daijutsu may be high tuning to low down and level because he lacks experience. Naruto's daijutsu style the whirling tide fist was perfect for him in every way possible and Naruto integrated his wind manipulation and his chakra chains into the style. Which made it nearly impossible to copy it with its unpredictability not even his sensei, Hitake Kakashi with his sharigan could not even read his movements coming. Example. Just say if someone dodged Naruto's attack by a few inches or more he could use his wind manipulation to hit them with just as much force as if he hit them. Another example, why it's so hard to track Naruto's movements and what makes them unpredictable that's where the chakra chains come in. They will move frequently around Naruto to try and cover up what he will do next and before you knew it you were either dead or knock on your ass. Even though technically Naruto never beat Kakashi in a taijutsu bout but that didn't mean he didn't get in a few good hits and made his sensei sweat from overexertion of thinking too hard on what move to use next. Naruto's ninjutsu's skills well one could say he was a complete utter monster in this category. With his three affinities one which only Kakashi knows about one which really didn't matter, but in the time frame of the past three years he mastered the leaf exercise for all three. After finishing his leaf cutting exercise in two weeks after he started, he started making 100 cage bushins to turn the leaves moist and another 100 to turn the leaves to dust. Within a week's time he got both water and earth manipulation down packed. It was rather easier after already doing it with his wind affinity so all he had to do was do the same step but switch it up instead of cutting the leaf all he had to do was make the leaves moist and turn the other to dust. 
Kakashi also went to the next step for his wind manipulation by stopping the flow of a waterfall, easy right. It was along a grueling process but Naruto mastered the waterfall exercise in a month's time. Naruto's ninjutsu thrived above and beyond Kakashi's expectations. I mean the kid was a walking stamina freak along with his chakra reserves that were larger than even the Hokage himself not by much but he was a 13 years old and they were only going to increase as he gets older. Naruto had learned a wide range of jutsus by Kakashi and his father's library that he learned himself. His jutsu arsenal contains a vast amount of techniques from every affinity and some creations of his own. Naruto chakra control was good but could be better. With his reserves growing daily he has to continuously do chakra control exercises. But his control was mid to high tuning level. Naruto learned much from Tenzo in the art of Makutan and true to his word Tenzo stopped by once a month sometimes twice if he wasn't busy. Tenzo taught Naruto all that he could. Teaching everything he knew, every jutsu he learned and gathered through the years. Everything Tenzo taught him Naruto soaked it up like a sponge does in a bowl of water. And Naruto's personal favorite technique he learned from Tenzo was Makutan Haijutsu, Jukai Katan would release secret technique, Nativity of a World of Trees. The technique can grow on any surface and it can easily create a small dense forest if not more anywhere he so chooses. It can be used as an attack and be used for defense allowing him to capture an enemy at the same time. It was overall the most useful jutsu he had. Naruto's skill in Makutan was about the same as Tenzo's in strength and in skill. Tenzo was quite proud of Naruto of accomplishing that feat. In throwing weapons Naruto was outstanding in kunais, shurikens, and senbon as well. He could hit the bullseye every single time even moving at incredible speeds he could still hit the bullseye marker. Naruto's kenjutsu he was a prodigy of the art. Naruto doesn't really have a style for the sword. You could say he was a go with the flow type of guy. But like his daijutsu he integrated his chakra chains with his kenjutsu making it hard to read his movements. Naruto's kenjutsu was low tuning to maybe mid tuning level. Not bad for someone who doesn't have a style. Now Naruto's genjutsu was non-existent. He could dispel genjutsus but not cast them. He even tried activating his shin wagon and see if it would work that way but nothing worked so instead of wasting his time by trying to learn genjutsus he would just bettering himself by dispelling them. So he had Kakashi cast a multitude of them on Naruto at random times to see if he would catch on to it, which helped Naruto a lot. Now on to Fuinjutsu. Naruto's level in the art of Fuinjutsu was truly magnificent. He could be called a seal master in the art his ingenuity in the art of Fuinjutsu was so great that it was scary. But that's partially because of his shin wagon. His shin wagon could decipher and decode most few injustice seals that he had come across in his father's library besides a few. Naruto truly shows of how the Uzumaki's ingenuity were in the art of few injutsu. Speaking of his father's library, Naruto just about read every single book and scroll in Minato's library. He even read books on politics not because he wanted to but because he had to. He knew if he wanted to become Hokage he would need to study up on it. Not him in particular but his cage bushins, I mean that's what they were there for to do the boring stuff. All in all Naruto was an extremely skilled shinobi even though he isn't considered a shinobi in Konoha yet but that will change in due time by tomorrow. 12 minutes afternoon, Naruto was peacefully in his bed before he heard a knock at his door. Naruto grown today was supposed to be his day off from training deciding not to get up from his bed he decided to try to go back to sleep. Knock 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 house keeping a high pitch voice set outside his door. Mm. Go away replied Naruto rolling over on his side. Knock 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 housekeeping you want towel. The same high pitch voice said. No towels need sleepy, Naruto said getting a little annoyed that the person won't quit. Knock 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 housekeeping you want me to fluff pil low. Replied the high pitch voice again but a little louder. Please go away and let me sleep for the love of Kami. God, yelled Naruto completely fed up with the person knocking at his apartment door and pulled the covers over his head. Knock 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 housekeeping you want me jerk you off, said the high pitch voice again. Naruto eyes opened and got up what the hell is wrong with this person. Naruto stood approximately 5 foot 8 inches tall and had two bangs on either side that framed his face much like his father. Naruto was easily the tallest person in his class and the strongest I might add. Naruto let out an agitated sigh to himself as he made his way towards the door. Naruto got to the door and opened only to see his one-eyed Jown and Sensei who was giving him an odd eye smile. What caught Naruto's attention were the bags in his hands. But before Naruto asked he wanted to know something before asking what were in the bags. Was that you Kakashi Oni Isan? It seemed it was more of a statement than a question and Kakashi saw his apprentice's irritated face. Who me? I have no idea what you are talking about Naruto Atoto. I just knocked. Replied Kakashi nonchalantly. Yeah, whatever. What's in the bags? 
asked Naruto with a questioning look. They are for you since you are going to become a shinobi tomorrow and decided to buy you a new set of attire since the orange jumpsuit sticks out like a sore thumb. And besides I think you will like what I picked out for you. Explained Kakashi with an eye smile. Hey I like my orange jumpsuit and I like the color orange, Naruto said presently with a tick mark on his forehead. Well if you want to become a real shinobi you need to dress like one. Replied Kakashi walking past Naruto and setting the bags on his dining room table and plopped down on Naruto's couch. Naruto sighed why was it that everyone hated his orange jumpsuit? I mean sure a part of the reason why he wore it for so long was because that all the store owners would kick him out or charge him almost triple the amount of what other people paid for. He actually never even paid for his jumpsuits. He found a box of them in a dumpster that he was ravaging through when he was younger while looking for any type of food after the orphanage kicked him out. They were also warm during those oh so cooled nights. They just stuck with him until now. Okay fine, I'll try the clothes on and see if they fit. And received a nod in return. Naruto grabbed the bags and went to his room to change. About 10 minutes later Naruto walked out of his room gone was the orange baggy jumpsuit in replace Naruto was now wearing a long sleeved black shirt that showed his muscled tone upper body with the Uzumaki insignia on the back of his shirt. Also he was now wearing baggy black hanbu pants with white strapping going up to his mid calf and also had white strappings on his right mid thigh holding his kunai holster in place. Naruto also wore black hanbu sandals to go with his outfit. Well look at you looking all spiffy and whatnot. But now to add the finishing touch, said Kakashi pulling out a scroll and putting his hand in the tiger seal and said Kai, release. And there was a black cloak or five to be exact that came to existence. Kakashi handed him one of the cloaks and watched Naruto examining it. The cloak was blood colored red that had pure black colored flame designs coming from the bottom of the cloak and the sleeves. The trimming of the cloak had black trimming. Naruto looked at the back of the cloak. The back of the coat had the kanji for Uzumaki Naruto also on the top of his name and at the bottom of his name were black swirls with three black domos that looked like pupils. Whoa! Was all Naruto could before he put it on. Putting his arms through the sleeves the cloak went all the way down to his mid-calves. Thank you Kakashi Anisen, said Naruto enthusiastically. It's no problem as long as you get out of the ice or of a jumpsuit it was worth spending the money. Well I gotta go on a mission see you in a couple of days. Later. And Kakashi was gone in a swirl of leaves. Once Kakashi was gone, Naruto unsealed his sword from a scroll that he found in his father's vault and strapped it to his back. Damn I look badass. I can't wait to see the look on the people's faces when they see me tomorrow, exclaimed and excited Naruto his life was going to officially change tomorrow once he aces the academy exams. It was time to show his comrades and the villagers what he is made of. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.